Wow, it's been a busy day at the salon. What can I say? It's all thanks to my top-notch hairstyling talent. Ta-da! What did you do to my hair? Platinum blonde is the current trend, ma'am. I, I asked for brown! How can I go to school looking like this? Ugh, she has no eye for beauty. <sighs> but, oh no, this dumb machine. <sighs> At least it's not completely burned. Were you dosing off while cutting my hair? Give us our money back, now! Money? I've only worked here for a week. How am I supposed to pay them back? Ask my parents? No way. I, the beautiful Olivia, had declared in front of them that I hated school and would build my own career through my passion for hairstyling, not with any of those boring books. So, I left my hometown and got a job at this fancy hair salon in the big city. I would prove to my parents that I could actually earn money with my talent. Ugh, but now my boss was going berserk at me. Oh, dearie me. There's no need to make a fuss over such a measly amount of money. I shall pay for it on her behalf. I turned around and, wow, it was this graceful-looking middle-aged woman. Her outfit, hairstyle, and manners all screamed elegance and luxury. Pretty girl, I can see that you have a keen eye for beauty. The only thing you're missing is an experienced mentor's guidance, and I happen to know someone. I can't believe it. Mr. Fullington, the world's number one hairstylist, was going to be my mentor. Of course, it's all thanks to this awesome lady. Oh, wait. Mom. I should call her mom now, as she's just adopted me. She must have taken a liking to me seeing how determined I was, pursuing my passion despite all hardship. She and her husband are millionaires who couldn't have children, so yeah, they decided to take me in. Man, this is the best thing to happen to me ever. Olivia, school isn't the only way to success. With your talent, the road can be much shorter. My foster parents are so kind. Just look at this room. I feel like a princess. Just look at this gigantic bed, satin sheets, and walk-in closet. Better still, they even arranged for a makeup artist and a stylist to spend all day helping me look fabulous. The rich kid's life sure was sweet. I was so immersed in all of it that I almost forgot the main reason why I agreed to do this. The hairstyling course with Mr. Fullington. Mom, Dad, I know that you're both very busy, but I've been waiting so long. Has Mr. Fullington forgot about our appointment? Oh, sweetie, I'm sorry, but he's been sick, so his schedule has all been put off till next month. Don't worry, darling. In the meantime, why don't you try attending some fancy parties on our behalf? It's a good chance to expand your social circle and learn how to make money from all the best. Oh, that sounds pretty good. If I could make lots of money, then my parents would have to take me seriously and stop their stupid go-back-to-school demands. As soon as I arrived at the party, all these new friends gathered around and complimented on how beautiful I looked. The rich guys went crazy for me too. I instantly became the center of attention. This one guy called Bruce introduced himself as the son of the CEO to the top media corporation in the US. Olivia, that exquisite face of yours was made for the big screen. You should play the leading role in our new movie. Oh, acting? I'd never thought about it before. Hmm. Walking down the red carpet and posing in front of hundreds of cameras did sound appealing. It's worth a try, right? I was still stunned at Bruce's offer when I felt something cool on my finger. Oh my gosh, a sparkly red diamond ring? William, heir to the Geogems Limited. Pleasure to meet you, Olivia. Please consider this my greeting gift. And this continued all evening until I couldn't hold any more stuff. Flowers from Justin, a jewelry set from Andrew, a perfume collection from Antony, and this watch from, geez, I couldn't remember anymore. I was trying to slip away when a handsome guy blocked me. You're stunning, Olivia. Can I see you tomorrow? A date? I didn't even know him. No, no. What a pity. I'm meeting my old friends at West High tomorrow. Sorry, it's not that I'm picky or anything. But dating can't be that easy, right? Phew, finally home. What an eventful evening. Just then, I got a call from Minnie, my best friend. Minnie told me that some mean girls at school were spreading rumors that I stole money from my parents, then packed up and ran away. Okay then, let them tittle-tattle. Tomorrow, I'll show those meanies who's the real deal. Yay, it's so nice to see Minnie again. 
We immediately chatted non-stop about all kinds of things. Then suddenly, the hyenas appeared with the same sarcastic tone as usual. Wow, counterfeit goods are so well made these days. You know, your supposedly Birkin bag is extremely rare. There's only five of those on Earth, right? Busted! How much do supercar hourly rentals and bodyguards cost nowadays, little miss show-off? Minnie was going to defend me, but I stopped her. No need to waste time arguing with these people. <laughs> I then grasped Minnie's hand to leave, but look, Olivia! I looked up. There was an airplane flying at very close range, and it was writing something? O L I V. The white smoke actually spelled out m my name! I've only seen this in movies! I gasped in shock as the plane landed, and stepping out of the cockpit was the guy at the party last night, Nathan. Turns out, he was the youngest pilot in America, and wanted to impress me with this grand gesture after being rejected yesterday. Flying in the sky is my passion. And, Olivia, I want to be your personal pilot, taking you wherever you want. Oh my goodness, I don't know what was better. Having a rich, handsome guy going out of his way to impress me, or seeing the astonished looks on my fake friends' faces. <sighs> Such thrilling days like this should have made me happy, right? But sitting among this mountain of expensive gifts, I couldn't shake this uneasy feeling. Being the center of smitten eyes and receiving countless compliments and gifts was cool and all, but Minnie's words awakened me. Olivia, do you think they really are generous enough to give you all this without asking for anything in return? No, I shouldn't accept these pricey items. I was putting them all back in their boxes to return them when my foster mom walked in. Oh no, darling! Returning gifts is considered very insulting in our society. <sighs> the world of the rich is so complicated. So I listened to her and dismissed the idea of returning those presents. But I should still return the favor, right? So I agreed to meet some of them. The first person must be the one who impressed me the most, Nathan the pilot. His airplane hangar was where we had our first date. I couldn't find anything bad about Nathan, but we just didn't click. He kept on rambling about planes, which model each was, how hard it was for him to get them, blah, 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 while I had no interest in any of this. The next guy, William, was even worse. He not only invited me, but also dozens of other beautiful girls. He even gave each girl a gemstone from his collection. A true player, so obviously a skip. Bruce was easier to talk to, but I soon realized that he had a problem. This set of glassware was custom made by the most skillful craftsman in Switzerland. It's yours if you like. Oh, wait, I'll have someone bring them over later. Look at this beautiful painting. Wouldn't it be perfect in your bedroom? Ah, but it's too big for you to carry home. I'll send it over later. What about my leading role in the movie you mentioned? <laughs> I almost forgot, but... Olivia, acting is not as easy as you think. Besides, the entertainment industry is really toxic. Please just be my princess, okay? See? He kept promising me the world and then... nothing. What a boastful, stingy liar! I didn't like any of these guys, so I must return their expensive gifts. But as soon as I carried the boxes out of the room, my foster mom stopped me. My silly Olivia, why are you so concerned about this? To them, these things are merely a drop in the ocean. But if you feel uncomfortable, I'll keep them out of sight for you. Giving them back will bring shame to our family. And you don't want that, do you? All right, that seemed like the best solution. My foster parents had been so nice to me, I shouldn't cause them any trouble. But a few days later, I discovered that they had secretly used my phone to ask Bruce for more presents. He thought I was angry, so he promised me a huge surprise tomorrow. It's weird. Why did they do that? They're as rich as Bruce's family, aren't they? I asked them why, and turned out my foster parents just wanted to test Bruce, as he seemed to be the most persistent in pursuing me, but had not shown his sincerity. Early next morning, I received a call from Bruce, saying that he'd sent someone over with a luxurious car, and reminded me about our date tonight. Wait, an entire car? That's too much this time! I was about to tell him to keep it when my foster father rushed in, saying that my parents were seriously ill. Oh gosh. I quickly hung up the phone and immediately went back to my hometown. Dear God, please protect my parents. Surprisingly, 
my mom opens the door looking perfectly fine. And there was dad as healthy as can be watching TV. Oh, thank goodness. My foster dad must have made a mistake. It's been a while since I was home, so I decided to stay the night. And as we were having some family time, I got another call from Bruce. Oh no, I forgot to cancel our date. And now he's at the mansion waiting for me. The problem was, Bruce couldn't find his sports car anywhere and kept on making a fuss about it. I tried calling my foster parents to resolve this, but I couldn't contact them the whole evening. The morning after, I returned to the mansion to find strangers going in and out. Um, what are you all doing? Hi, we're moving in. Great to meet you, neighbor. It's such a catch to find a good place like this up for rent at reasonable prices. Right in the local newspaper, am I right? For rent? No, no, no. What on earth is going on? I rushed into my foster parents' bedroom, but it was empty. Even the gifts they said they'd keep for me were all gone. They left without a trace, as if they were running away. What? Did your partners in crime leave you? Now don't you dare deny it, you fraud! What did he say? Partners in crime? Fraud? I tried explaining to him how I wanted to return all the gifts I received, but he wouldn't believe me. He threatened to call the cops if he didn't get his car back. Oh no, no way that's gonna happen. All I could do was beg Bruce to give me some time. This is the home of our town's famous sheriff. He's the only person who could help me, but all I got was, I'm sorry, but I'm retired. You're gonna have to ask someone else. What to do now? I was freaking out when, out of nowhere, no need for my dad. This is a piece of cake. I can give you a hand. I turned around to see a guy leaning on the door with a cold, arrogant look, and his arms crossed. Who is this guy? Can he really help me? We'll see. Wow, Alan really took the risk and invested a lot in this. A sports car, a mansion, expensive trips, and even this huge event. I have to admit, he looks quite handsome being all dressed up. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Alan, Yep, the sheriff's son is playing the rich heir of a big corporation chasing after a beautiful young lady, which is me. However, I didn't expect things would turn out so real. Alan's pursuit of me even made it on the local news. You guys must be curious how someone who's not a millionaire did this. Well, Alan convinced Bruce to fund our plan. He was hesitant at first, but he soon realized that this was the only way to catch the frauds and get his stuff back. So, reluctantly, he agreed. Alan is indeed a genius, and his well-thought-out strategy quickly got the fish hooked. We were making headlines everywhere, and I finally received a text from my so-called foster mom. At first, she was just asking how I was doing, and talked about how busy they were with overseas projects. Until today. Olivia, how's it going with that mysterious millionaire boyfriend of yours? He seems willing to give you anything. So you will consider him, won't you, darling? As expected, these money-hungry crooks wouldn't let it slide once they heard millionaire. So I replied to her that my rich man was treating me well and wanted to throw an extravagant feast this weekend to officially announce our relationship. And I hoped my parents could put off their business trip and come join us. Tonight was the night. Gosh, I was so nervous, as my mom didn't reply to that message of mine. Will they show up, or did they sense something was off? While I was super nervous, Alan came to me and held my hand real tight. Don't worry, Olivia. Everything will work out as planned. My, my. What is this feeling? It's undeniable that I always feel so safe being with Alan. The party finally began. Alan proposed to me with this rare, precious surrender by gem on a ring, which is one of the only three existing in the whole world. Everyone started buzzing. Alan's acting was so perfect, from his eye contact to the words he said, that I couldn't help but feel butterflies in my stomach. I... I do. When the party was over and all the guests left, I received a call from my foster mom telling me to go to the back gate. As predicted, they offered to keep the engagement ring for me. Drop the act, frauds! The two were still processing what was happening when the cops barged in and arrested them. It worked! Can't believe I've successfully tricked these notorious scammers. <laughs> what about my car? My Bugatti? Where is it? Oh, I almost forgot the main sponsor for this perfect plan. Without him, we definitely couldn't pull this off. 
Or stingy millionaire Bruce Dillon? I bet there hasn't been a single day gone by that he didn't think about his missing gifts, huh? <laughs> that reminds me. This sparkling, precious ring, too. I quickly took it off, passed it to Alan, and told him to give it back to Bruce. But the minute the Serendibite ring left my finger, Alan put on something else. Oh my god, another ring? Your role as a millionaire's girlfriend may be over, but will you be a girlfriend to an ordinary guy like me, Olivia? Yes! A million times yes! After all this mess, I now realize that I've still got a lot of learning to do. So I've decided to listen to my parents and finish school. Turns out, if I really paid attention in class, it's actually pretty interesting. And Minnie is still my amazing BFF, who let me have free reign to experiment on her hair. And of course, this cute future detective too. Babe, time to change your hairstyle. It was such a beautiful weekend, but instead of being out having fun, I was stuck at home. For what, you ask? To teach Excel to a girl who doesn't even know how to use shift key shortcuts. <sighs> what is the matter with you? I've explained the code 20 times to you already. Um, I... I'm sorry. Let's face it. You suck at this. Try to beat me in your dream. Ugh. If I had to waste one more second sitting next to her, I'd go crazy. Look how fake you are. If you're mad, then just show me. Why do you always have to be misfriendly? Hmm. Let me introduce you. That's Laura, my so-called sister. Two months ago, my mom brought her home and announced, Jeff, I have something to tell you. Back when we broke up for a while, due to your parents' hatred towards me, well... During that time, I found out I was pregnant. I gave birth to our little girl, Laura. I was only 22, and I had no money. So as much as it pained me to do so, I gave her away. I've never stopped thinking about her. And now, well, I've managed to find her. She dabbed at her teary eyes, then handed Dad the DNA test results. Dad was overwhelmed and ran over to hug Laura. They all cried a lot, and hugged a lot. As for me, I just stood there in shocked silence as I watched this family reunion take place. It all happened so fast. How was I supposed to believe that it was just a coincidence when Mom suddenly found her long-lost child after so many years? What now, Skylar? Stop being so headstrong. Mom scolded me, then rushed over to Laura and started cuddling her and soothingly stroking her hair. It's not my fault she has the learning capacity of a slug. Stop interfering, else I'll quit teaching her. By the way, those loving mother-daughter things also? Cut it off! It's ridiculous! I know what you're thinking. What's with the attitude towards my mom? The thing is, she's not even my real mom. A few months ago, something crazy happened to me. A strange woman showed up out of nowhere and claimed she was my mom. Say what now? Of course, I told her she'd got the wrong person. But when I saw the selling contract between my mom and her, I froze in shock. Turns out, my mom miscarried a child, but she was too afraid she'd lose her place in the family. So she bought me from this woman. So I was adopted. It's common, right? But still... I don't deserve to be treated like that. I had always been neglected since I was little. Mom never hugged or kissed me. She didn't read me bedtime stories or tuck me into bed at night. All she ever did was snarl at me. Go away! I guess I convinced myself that this was just how Mom was. But then Lara arrived, and Mom is totally different with her. <sighs> I get it now. I get why she treated me so cold and why I've never felt happy despite growing up in a wealthy family. Because I'd never belonged here. After the incident with the woman, I confronted Mum about it. I get it. I know I'm not your real daughter, and that's why you think it's acceptable to treat me like garbage? Oh, please. Stop with the dramatics. Let me tell you this. 
Even if you did adopt me, I'm still going to prove my efficiency to dad and take over this company by myself. Mom was dumbfounded after hearing that. Then, not long after that, she turned up with Lara. That's why I didn't believe there was no coincidence. She brought Lara back to compete with me. And if that was true, then, what do I have to be scared of? <laughs> How are my two girls? Skylar, are you still helping Lara with her studies? Yeah, Dad. She still helps me every day. Thank you so much. Okay, that's great. When you move past the basics, I think you should take a few more extra courses. Do your best and try to follow your sister. There's no way she can be as good as me, not even in her wildest dream. Laura is very smart, and she'll soon be up to speed. I'm also teaching her more about our family business. Huh? Is mom going to teach her more to compete with me? I can obviously see her greed and competitiveness. But whatever. Laura and I are at two distinctly different levels anyway. I am an excellent student at the Columbia Business School. Well, she's just an uneducated nobody. Poof, please. I have absolutely nothing to worry about. Mom kept forcing her to study, but... See? Speaking of mom, she'd been acting weird lately. One minute she treats me like a stubborn stain she can't get rid of, then the next she's trying to set me up with some guy named Dean. He's the son of her super rich colleague. I don't understand why she suddenly feels the need to find me a boyfriend. And dad wasn't helping the situation, as instead of telling mom to stop playing matchmaker, he was encouraging her. Ugh. Okay, I just wanted them to quit bugging me, so in the end, I agreed to talk to this Dean guy. But now, he won't stop messaging me, and he's even shown up at the house. Hmm, I suppose he is kind of handsome and nice, but he's not my type. So I just talked to him out of politeness. Until one time, I saw Lara sneaking a peek at Dean while he was waiting for me in the lobby. Wait, don't tell me she likes Dean? Oh well, she's welcome to my leftovers. I don't like this guy anyway. Then one day, I was walking along the corridor when I received a text from Dean. Skylar, are you free tomorrow? Let's have dinner together. I was about to text back when I suddenly heard Mom and Lara arguing. What's wrong with you, Lara? Why are you secretly dating that jerk? Why not, Dean? He's a good guy. Besides, he told me that there's nothing going on between him and Skylar. So Dean is two-timing us? He snuck out on a date with Lara while flirting with me on the phone all day? What on earth? I tried to keep calm while continuing to listen. You're crazy. Stop this stupid secret dating game at once. What? Why is mom insisting he's a good guy to me, but telling Laura the opposite? Well, mom, which one is it? Is Dean a good match like you told me, or a jerk like you told Laura? He's, he's rich, so keep on dating him and stop bothering me with your nonsense. Ugh, I wasn't born yesterday. There's definitely something wrong with this Dean. The very next day, I decided to go and follow Dean. Oh my gosh, what was he wearing? And why did he go to this slum? Then he gathered with a few other thugs. So it's obvious, Dean definitely was a street guy. That's why mom didn't let Lara get close to him. But why did she match him with me? Could that be a part of her plan to bring me down? Ha, huh. nice try. <laughs> I'd had enough spying for one day so I was about to leave. But then suddenly, I heard a familiar voice which startled me. I turned around, then... What? It's... Mom? How dare you ruin the plan? Mind your words. I did as you said. I told you to flirt with Skylar to distract her, not Laura. Don't think I'm paying you a nickel more. Fine, don't pay me. Just be sure to take me a picture of your husband's face when the real DNA result arrives in his inbox. <laughs> you, you, you! Oh my god. Did I just hear it wrong? What DNA results? Could it be? 
I immediately went home and rushed into my dad's office to look for the DNA certificate that my mom gave him that day. Here it was! What should I do now? That's right, I had to take it to the hospital to have it checked. After pleading and putting pressure on the doctor, he finally admitted that he'd accepted a bribe from... Dean! To fake the test result! I asked for the original one and... Believe it or not, Lara was not my dad's child. I immediately rushed home and showed my dad the original DNA results. He was so shocked, I had to help him sit down, then get him a glass of water. When he got over the initial shock, he asked me to call Lara and Mum in to confront them. But, oh no, Lara's room was empty. Only one letter was lying on the bed. Sorry, everyone. Dean told me the truth. Thank you all for taking care of me. Especially you, Skylar. I honestly enjoyed being around you. I think you're kind and patient. Please don't ever change. I don't belong in your world, so I can't stay. If we're predestined, we will meet again. Thank you, and sorry again. Love, Lara. Unbelievable! How could you lie to all of us about something like this? Knowing she couldn't wriggle out of this one, Mum replied, Okay, Laura isn't yours. I fell pregnant with her after we broke up. I didn't want you to throw me out, so I paid Dean to get a fake DNA certificate. Then I paid him again to date Skylar and distract her from her studies. This business should be Laura's, not hers. But that jerk went and fell for Laura instead. Poor Dad. He looked so heartbroken. Mom tried pleading with him to forgive her, but he told her the trust was broken, and that she had to leave. Everything's such a mess. Poor dad shut himself away in his office, while me, I lay on my bed, staring at the ceiling. I couldn't stop thinking about all of Mom's lies. And what for? Money? Fame? Status? Are all those things worth sacrificing dignity, honor, and trust for? I used to want to compete with Lara, too. But now, it turns out that all of that was just fleeting. Dad, I think I should leave, too. Because I'm not your biological daughter, either. You... 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 I've known for a while. But I've kept quiet, as I was afraid that you would abandon me. Thank you for always being there for me. You're a good man, and you don't deserve all the pain you've been through. Then I told my dad all about how I found out I was adopted and how my mom paid my real mom to hand me over. Dad froze for a few seconds, then calmly said, Skylar, honey, you'll always be my daughter, and I couldn't be prouder of you. Please, stay here with me. I couldn't hold back my tears. Did Dad really want me around? Even after all this crazy stuff? I really love my dad but I couldn't upset him anymore. The next day, Dad and I went around to Lara's adoptive mom's house. I cleared the air with her and invited her to come back with us. She politely declined. Turns out she just wants a simple life. We still meet up sometimes, and we've actually become pretty good friends. Isn't it amazing? Because before that, we were like water and fire. The fact that I don't have to teach her Excel anymore probably helps. <laughs> There are those who do whatever they can to win fame and fortune, but this often comes at a cost. Mum let greed turn her into a monster, and now she's paying for it. I don't like what she did, but she's still my mum. Well, my adoptive mum anyway, so I still send her subsidies and wish her happiness for the rest of her life. The truth is that I'd rather forego a huge fortune and live a quiet life than become someone I don't want to be. If it were you, would you do the same to live in peace? I was rushing to finish homework when suddenly a screeching shout startled me. Julia, why did you hide the letter Ben sent me? Uh, what? You've lost your mind, Katie. I already gave it to you. And didn't you say this guy was too ordinary for you? 
such a liar! This Ben guy tried calming her down, but it was too late. Everyone around us was already whispering. Ugh, I was not to blame for this. Guess what? That girl putting on the poor me act is my sister, Katie. We once were really close, but suddenly, boom, she changed. Now all she does is pick a fight with me. Oh, thank God. Here are my people. My dance club friends. Only dancing could help liven up my mood right now. We were happily chatting on the way to practice when suddenly... Julia, where are you going? Get back to class right now. Finals week is coming. <laughs> no way. You don't know how Katie just embarrassed me in front of the whole class. I'll never go back there. Stop making excuses. Then he dragged me back to the classroom. That's Max, my overbearing older brother. His catchphrases include, Julia, where are you going? Remember to come back before 9pm. You still have lots of homework to do. Or, Julia, come back and change your clothes. The dress you're wearing is too short. You see, I'm 16, not 6. Why does he keep treating me like a child? Worse still, this semester, he decided to move to my school to be able to watch my every step or something. Ugh, it's unbearable! After school, I came home exhausted, but unfortunately, this awful day was not over yet. Dad was there waiting for me, my report card in hand. Julia, there's not even a single B on here. Those dumb equations just wouldn't stick to my head. Dad, I've tried. Tried, you say? So it has nothing to do with you skipping school to go dancing, huh? Oh no, in her hand were a bunch of pictures of me practicing. Okay then, it's about time I let my parents know about my passion anyway. I think I want to pursue something else, which is dance. No, Julia, studying is the only way. I don't care what you do, as long as your grades improve. Please learn from your brother and sister. Study, 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 study all the time! I angrily stormed upstairs and slammed shut my door. Then I heard my mom's voice whispering outside. Never mention dancing again, Julia. Give it up. That silly hobby won't do you any good. What does she know? She isn't even my actual mom. Yes, they're just mine and Max's adoptive parents. I bet if my actual mom and dad were still alive, they'd understand and not forbid me from following my dreams. But life is too cruel. As our parents died 10 years ago in a traffic accident, then Max and I were in an orphanage until we were adopted and came to live here with our adoptive parents, a biology professor, a housewife, and their daughter, Katie. After a restless night of overthinking, the next morning, I trudged through the schoolyard like a zombie. Suddenly, a tall figure crashed into me. Ouch! The guy apologized profusely. Then, he told me he hadn't been paying attention as he was too engrossed in a cool video. Oh, this is our club's dance video I posted yesterday. We immediately started chatting. So, his name is Daniel. He's a new transfer student here but already a big fan of our club. We were watching another video together when his phone screen popped up a message. Hey, are you free tomorrow night? Katie? Oh, that's definitely my sister Katie. Why does she have to appear everywhere? Anyway, after I parted ways with Daniel, I excitedly ran to the practice room to tell my friends about our new hardcore fan. I waved at them, but they just ignored me. Weird. Hey guys, what's wrong? Don't you know? Julia, yesterday your mom called everyone asking to disband the club. Your mom even blamed me for being a bad influence and distracting you from studying. So please, stay away from us from now on. What? My mom said that? How did she even know their numbers? You're welcome, Pumpkin. I've helped you introduce your dear friends to mom. They seem to get along really well, don't they? Katie? Again? Why am I even surprised? I stumped after her. Then from afar, I spotted Daniel waving at her as they passed by each other. And she immediately turned on her flirty mode. Hmm, I suddenly thought of a great idea. Well, well, just wait and see, my beloved sister. <laughs> When Katie walked off, I quickly ran over to chat with Daniel, and it didn't take long for me to lure him into my trap. My friends are all going on about the new Jurassic World movie. Have you seen it? I want to watch it too, but I have no one to go with. Is that so? Actually, I was planning on seeing that movie this weekend. Let's go together. Bingo! The fish has taken the bait. Katie, you took away the one thing I love the most, and now watch me do the same to you. That Saturday night, I happily went to the cinema in a pretty dress. No sign of Daniel yet, so I got to my seat first. But... Julia, what on earth are you doing here? Oh, Katie, the prey even showed up by herself. Nice. She immediately jumped on me, accusing me of stalking and ruining her date. We argued loudly until a member of staff kicked us out. 
A few days later, Daniel and I met at a cafe he chose. But right away, I saw Katie at the next table. Again. She seemed to be waiting for someone. I walked over to her. You're so persistent on being a third wheel. She was so angry but couldn't say anything. I went back to the table and sat with Daniel. Huh? What? There's ketchup all over my dress! Mmm, that does it! So I lunged at her and we started brawling. And here we are, at the cop station, waiting to be bailed out. As soon as mom arrived, Katie put on her waterwork sack and sobbed about how I was trying to steal away the love of her life. I couldn't be around either of them anymore, so I left with Daniel. We weren't far from the cop station when Max rushed out from nowhere. Stay away from my sister, and why would I? Then my brother punched Daniel in the face. What are you doing? It's Katie. She's the one who keeps messing with us. No, Julia. Katie is just a victim. Stop seeing this guy. Great. Now even Max was defending Katie. I helped Daniel up and left with him despite Max's calls from behind. The next day, I was putting things in my locker when I saw Max and Katie passing by, looking real close. They were whispering something to each other, as if his real sister was her, not me. Fine then, if that meant I would stop being supervised. Katie still wouldn't leave me alone though. There were countless times she squeezed between me and Daniel, laughing with him as if I didn't exist. Another time, when we were about to kiss, she jumped out of nowhere, gave Daniel a concert ticket, then the two of them left together. So annoying. Honestly, it's no longer about taking revenge on Katie anymore. I do feel happy when I'm with Daniel. He seemed to want to be with me too, but why didn't he just reject Katie? But at least it was me he invited to the prom this Friday. Not her. That night, I excitedly put on my prom dress, curled my hair, did my nails. Everything's all set. Daniel would be here soon. I opened the door to go downstairs when, oh no, it had been locked from outside. My parents were on vacation, so it had to be my cruel siblings. I immediately called my parents, but all I received was, You shouldn't be even thinking about prom, considering how bad your grades have been lately. Stay home and study. Right at that moment, there was the sound of an engine outside. I ran to the window and saw Katie getting into Daniel's car. I banged on the door and yelled, but only Max's voice came from outside. Julia, that guy is not good at all. Just leave this to me and Katie. Why are you on her side and not mine? Why is everyone turning their back on me? I felt like such an outsider in this family, so from then on, I did my best to ignore them all. I passed without a word as Max and Katie gathered around our parents after their trip. Then I stayed silently in my room, ignoring Max's call outside the door. I also tried ignoring Daniel, but he continued calling me. I think you've got the wrong number. I'm not Katie. Huh? Julia, what's wrong with you? Um, let's see. You left me alone and went to prom with Katie? Oh, that... I already saw Katie waiting as I arrived. She said you'd already left for prom with your friends. I looked for you everywhere. I was thinking about you the whole party. Gosh, Katie is taking things too far. Even my poor Daniel has to put up with her stupid tricks. Baby, what should I do to make you feel better? How about a road trip? Let's spend this weekend together, just us two. Honestly, all I need is Daniel's sweet voice to make my anger go away. I'd love that. I'm so sick and tired of being in this nightmare house. Being alone with Daniel felt amazing. After two hours of driving, we pulled up at a gas station to take a break, and he told me to pick anything I wanted. This trip is on me. I have to make it up for my princess, don't I? Oh, how did I get such a wonderful boyfriend? I stuffed my face with snacks as I waited for Daniel to return from the restroom. Hmm, what's taking him so long? Just as I was going to step outside to look for him, the cashier stopped me. I'm sorry, miss. You haven't paid for those. Also, your friend left you this. Then he gave me a bunch of papers. One of them was a note saying, Surprise! Take this as your first life lesson, honey. Don't be so gullible. If you're wondering why you deserve all this, go ask your lovely brother, Max. Din. I stared down at the other papers. Receipts! This came to hundreds. He'd grab all these random things, including five boxes of Mountain Dew. Is this for real? How could this guy be the guy I was deeply in love with just seconds ago? I was on the verge of breaking down. But first, I still had this huge bill to pay. Oh god, where do I get the money for all this? Should I call my family for help? No, no way. I could already hear Max scolding, then my parents nagging, and Katie's scornful look. 
And so, I begged the store owner to let me work here to pay back the bill. It's not so bad, at least I wouldn't have to go home. But only, I kept on messing up. I clogged the slushy machine so the floor was covered in sugared ice. I knocked over the sunglasses stand while cleaning and constantly counted change incorrectly. It was a disaster. Maybe if I'd pay more attention in math, it wouldn't be this bad. I tried everything, but all I did was create more trouble instead of paying back the money. Eventually, they kicked me out. And now, all I can do is sit at this abandoned bus stop, not knowing where to go or who to find. Thinking about my life with my family before made me tear up. If only, suddenly, a familiar car stopped in front of me. Dad! Julia, here you are. Everyone's been frantically searching for you. I'm so glad you're okay. Why did you scare us like this? I'm sorry, Dad. Dancing is my only passion, but I knew you wouldn't accept it. No, Julia. I'd never stop you pursuing what you love. I used to think you were just making up excuses for being lazy. Right at that moment, another car pulled over. It was Max, my mom, and even Katie. What on earth are you doing? If you keep acting like this, mom and dad will kick us out. Max, why would you think such a thing? Max let go of me, then hesitantly said, I know you take education very seriously, so I always try my best at school. Julia and I are just adopted, so... Actually, I'm adopted too. I've overheard this once from mom and dad. So ever since then, I was scared they'd love Julia more than me and throw me out. Oh, my baby. It's true. We adopted all three of you. This doesn't change a thing. You're our children and we love you all. And only wish for you to care and look out for each other. Whoa. This was all too much to take in. My emotions were all over the place and I didn't know whether to smile or cry. Secrets only make us misunderstand one another, so from now on, we won't hide anything, okay? On that note, I'm sorry, honey. Let me tell you all this one last secret that I've been keeping to myself all these years. It turned out that my adoptive mom was mine and Max's biological dad's ex. After our parents died, she offered to take us in. Our adoptive dad didn't know the story behind that, and he only knew about an ex of my adoptive mom who was a pro dancer. Mom was so afraid dad would find out about me and my brother's true identity and be angry, so she tried her best to hide my dance talent. But she never expected her husband to be this generous and understanding. So all problems were resolved and family peace was restored. Oh boy, I miss home so much. But now was not the time to go back. Us three siblings had one more important task. Expose Daniel. Can you believe that Daniel turned out to be my brother's best friend from his old school? Daniel misunderstood my brother's friendship for love, so when Max rejected him, he felt like a fool and started causing problems for Max. That's why Max transferred schools, but Daniel followed him there. Knowing Max loved his two sisters very much, he deliberately approached us both and played tricks to make us resent each other. After that time at the police station, Max told Katie about this and worked up a plan to expose Daniel. We found Daniel's current partner and invited him to meet them at a diner. Then we told him everything his boyfriend had done. Needless to say, he was so angry he finished with Daniel and exposed his true face to the whole school. Facing a barrage of criticism, Daniel was scared and apologized to the three of us and promised to make up for it. Well, now that I have a happy family, I can freely pursue my dance passion. What else do I need? Just looking at Daniel being subservient is enough to satisfy me. <laughs>
Yet still she'd helped me? Maybe, just maybe, I've been misunderstanding her this whole time? Later that night, Emma suggested we should go for a picnic on the weekend, and for once, I excitedly agreed. But when the weekend rolled around, there was this hectic snowstorm. Ugh. Emma kept looking out at the snow, with disappointment written across her face. Ugh. That's when the idea hit me. How about we have an indoor picnic? Yes, that's right. That's a great idea. And so, we set up the tent right in our living room, and we were having the best time, when suddenly, the doorbell rang. I got up to answer it, and standing there, covered in snow, was a woman. She suddenly ran at me and said, Oh my gosh, Jasmine, you've grown up so fast! I've missed you so much! Before I could understand what was going on, Dad shouted, Megan, I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here like this! I know you won't accept my apology, but you don't understand. I had to see her. I've missed her every single day. Oh my god. So, that woman was my mother? I couldn't hold back my tears and ran straight over to hug her. I swear I had been waiting for this moment for years. Mom gently stroked my hair and then turned to my dad. Can I stay here for a while? Just to make it up to my beloved daughter after such a long time being apart, Elvis. Are you joking? Get out of my house. Dad, please let her stay. Please. But no matter how much I begged, Dad wouldn't give in. And so I turned to Emma for help. Elvis, just let her stay here. If Jasmine wants to be with her mom this badly, we should let them have some time together. Come on, darling. I looked at Emma with so much appreciation, then turned those puppy eyes towards my dad, and eventually he reluctantly nodded his head. Yay! I shouted and led mom to my room. From that day onwards, I spent most of my free time with her. We went to the movies together, shopping together, and honestly, it was the happiest I'd ever felt. One day, I was listening and humming along to my music when mom came in. Wow. So, you also love singing? It must be genetic. Back then, if I hadn't been so passionately obsessed with music, which drove your dad crazy, I might never have left you like that. Now I regret it so much, Jasmine. I put my arms around her and softly said, After all these years, I still think about that lullaby. Can you sing it to me? Which one? I sang you many lullabies back then. It's... Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. Oh, right. That one. Then she started singing. I swear to God, her voice was like an angel. But strangely, it didn't give me any of the feelings I had as a kid. Was it because I have grown up? While I was absorbed in my thoughts, I suddenly saw Emma's shadow at my doorway. But when she met my eyes, she hurried down the stairs. Huh? Why was Emma crying? I was so confused. She must be jealous of our relationship, Mom said. Yeah, probably, since she'd been married to my dad for three years, but we'd never been close. That evening, when I went to the kitchen with Mom to set the table, she suddenly shouted, Oh my gosh! Why did Emma make chicken parmigiana? Doesn't she know that your dad hates this? Then she took the plate and threw it in the trash, saying she would order takeaway instead. Huh? Dad hates this? He always complimented Emma on her signature dish. Before I could react, Emma entered the room. As soon as she saw her chicken in the trash, she glared at Mom. Things then got so awkward. Emma had skipped dinner. Mom also tried to start a conversation with Dad a few times, but he ignored her. Ugh, I felt so bad for Mom. In my Dad's eyes, there was only Emma now. But my mother had done nothing wrong. She just wanted to pursue her passion. Later that night, I was heading to the pantry to get some snacks when I heard Emma yelling at Mom. Megan, for old time's sake, I didn't bring up anything from the past, but you can't just do whatever you want. How dare Emma yell at my mom like that? As soon as Emma left, I ran over to my mom asking her what had happened. She hesitated for a while, then told me the whole story. It turned out Mom and Emma used to be in the same band when they were young. And since mom was always the lead singer, Emma had begrudged her ever since. Perhaps she has never gotten over it. Ugh, I didn't expect Emma to be so mean. 
So from that day on, I began to show my attitude towards Emma. I didn't let her go to the parent-teacher conference like I had promised before, and I even forbade Mick, my best friend, from talking to her every time he came over. Mom, how did you and Dad meet back in the day? Well, back then, your dad was a waiter at the lounge I used to sing at every weekend. We quickly fell in love and started leaving love letters for each other at our secret spot. Ew, how cheesy. It's called romantic, you silly. At that time, we put our initials at the end of every letter. Suddenly, there was some noise at the door, and I turned to see Dad standing right behind us. What do you mean, our initials? It represented our two favorite characters' names from that movie. Yes, it was the initials of Monica and Quincy in the movie Love and Basketball. Dad gaped at Emma in surprise as she continued. I was the one writing letters to you that year. But when I got to the meeting spot, I saw you and Megan together, so I left. Dad and Emma looked at each other, then turned to stare at Mom. Actually, back then I liked you so much that I pretended to be Emma, but it's not that important. In the end, you were still into me and we got along really well, right? I can't believe you lied to me like this for all these years! Then Dad angrily left the room, followed by Emma. As for Mom, she was sitting there, tears pouring from her eyes. Okay, so Mom was definitely in the wrong, but did Dad need to treat her like that? Who doesn't make mistakes from time to time? And anyway, it's because of my mom's mistake that I'm even here, right? From that day onwards, the atmosphere in the house was so intense. Dad ignored Mom, and Emma always gave Mom hateful looks. Until one day. I'd just gotten home from school when I saw my dad excitedly running towards me saying, Emma is pregnant. You're going to have a little brother or sister. Wow. I'd always wanted to have a sibling. I couldn't believe it. So that night, my family threw a party to celebrate, and Mom also congratulated Dad and Emma. And thanks to that, the tension between the three of them started to ease. Phew. But a few days later, for some reason, Dad found out that I'd lied about going studying with Mick. He was furious and grounded me for a week. I was sullenly playing on my iPad when Mom entered the room. Emma must be the snitch. Now that she's pregnant, she wants Dad to be angry with you, so he'll give all his love to her and the baby. Well, that just made sense. The other day, I'd even seen Emma whispering something to Dad, and as soon as he heard it, he got mad. Ugh, such a two-faced woman. I had to sort this out, and so I set up a fun plan for my stepmom. One time, I made her orange juice using powdered cheese, and she ended up spitting it out all over Dad. <laughs> Then I unscrewed the shower head to add blue food coloring, and that's how I gave her a Smurf makeover. It was hilarious hearing her horrid scream from the bathroom. Another time, I snuck into Emma's room, trying to put flour in her hair dryer. I was rummaging through the bedside table looking for her hair dryer, when suddenly I saw a DVD labeled Jasmine 0311. Huh? What's this? Why was my name on it? Curious, I went back to my room to play it. And then, I couldn't believe my eyes. On the screen, Emma was carrying a baby and singing a lullaby to her. This melody. Wasn't it the song Don't Know Why? So that baby was me? But Emma couldn't sing. Could she? Her voice was weak and sounded hoarse. What did this mean? I rushed to show my dad the DVD. Emma told me not to talk about this, but since you already know... I won't hide it anymore. Then he told me everything. Turns out my mom left for a rich man when I was only two years old, and it was Emma who came and helped my dad take care of me during my younger years. Oh my gosh. What? So all those memories of my mom's warm hugs and lullabies were all actually of Emma? A feeling of guilt welled up in my heart. I had to do something to apologize to Emma. So the next day... I asked Mick to go to the mall to help me buy her a gift. As I was passing a coffee shop, I suddenly saw my mom sitting with some guy. Without thinking much, I quickly pulled Mick to a nearby table and eavesdropped on them. Honey, how's the money? You know how pushy the creditors are, and they're getting kinda aggressive. Don't worry, it won't be long now. My daughter's on my side. She'll help me kick her stupid stepmom out. Then my ex-husband will soon follow her wish and volunteer to give me money. What? What was going on? Had mom come back just for dad's money? I was about to go confront her when my phone rang. It was dad. Jasmine, 
go to the hospital right away. Emma is in the emergency room. By the time I got there, I saw my dad sitting outside the ER with his head in his hands. After a while, the doctor came out and said, Both mother and baby are okay. Next time, please pay more attention to the patient's food allergy. How could you eat stuff you're allergic to? You must be more careful, okay? Yeah, Emma always took good care. It didn't make sense. Unless... my mom... I was about to tell Dad about what I'd seen at the mall when Mom suddenly appeared, eagerly asking about Emma's situation. Unable to stand her pretense any longer, I shouted, Mom, drop the act. It was you who did all of this, wasn't it? Jasmine, what nonsense are you uttering? Furious, I immediately told them the whole story I've heard. Megan, I could forgive you for the old letter story and for trying to sabotage my voice, but the fact that you wanted to harm my baby is unforgivable. It turns out the stuff from the past that she mentioned before was that my mom harmed her to destroy her voice. So that's why dad didn't let me sing, for fear that it would cause Emma pain. Suddenly mom burst out laughing. <laughs> I don't need your pity. You were so lucky to have such a beautiful voice and a wonderful man by your side. And even now, you're still trying to take the life that should have been mine. Megan, give it up already. You need to stop this. Mom was about to say something, but I interrupted her. Mom, please just go. I'm so ashamed to have a mother like you. Then I burst into tears. She got up and left, without even so much as a glance back at us. Emma took me into her arms. I was afraid that you would be disappointed. That's why I hid everything from you. I'm sorry for treating you so badly. She gently patted my head, and I felt like I was back in my childhood, where she'd held me and sang lullabies. It was so comforting. Finally, peace has returned to my family. I'm so fortunate to have Emma as a stepmom. And pretty soon, my little bro or sis will be here. And I can't wait. Huh. It's been a long time since I was able to enjoy myself at a party. It sure felt good. Now just one thing left to make this night even more perfect. I'm going to make my crush mine. There he is, Jad. O-M-G. Did he just glance at me? I could feel my heart flutter. As I immersed myself in a world with only Jad and me, the face of Harry the Metal Mouth suddenly popped up from nowhere. It's time for bed, mommy's little princess. What on earth was he saying? And why was everyone running toward the window like that? I jostled into the crowd and I peeked down. Oh, for heaven's sake! The beyond cringy woman standing there holding the speakerphone was none other than my mom! Janice, it's 10 p.m. You know it's your turn to stay with me tonight. I won't be able to sleep without you. God, is there any way for me to just evaporate right here, right now? This is too embarrassing. But wait, how did she know I was here? I immediately looked over at Christine. It must be her again. Everyone knew she had a huge crush on Jad too, and would do anything to get him. She's definitely the snitch. <sighs> it's so frustrating. Anyway, let me fill you in on the situation. This crazy woman is my mom, who gave birth to not only me, but also my older sister Patty and my big brother Will. I guess we all turned out alright, but this wasn't down to mom. She didn't raise us, our nanny Randy did. You see, mom used to be an actress. She was always busy, busy, busy with her work and her numerous flings, which resulted in each of us three having a different father. Luckily, we had Randy to take care of us, so I never felt like I was missing out on anything. On the contrary, having to see mom all day is a problem for me. A month ago, mom suddenly decided to retire and move in with me and my siblings. And who knew that an out-of-date star could be such a childish, clingy nightmare? Ugh! She didn't like being alone, so she insisted Patty and I had to take turns sleeping next to her. Then, she forced us to accompany her to the mall and be her luggage gophers and talk to her while she went for the zillionth beauty treatment of the week. One day, after an exhausting day out with Mom, we entered the house to Will rushing over and shouting. Mom, why did you tamper with my laptop? It turned out that Will had applied to the Juilliard Institute, one of the most famous art institutes in New York. But Mom went on his laptop and deleted the school's acceptance email. 
Meaning poor Will had missed out on the response deadline. Oh, sweetheart, I didn't mean to. I was trying to send an email to report those scammers on TV. But I must have accidentally deleted your email. That's probably a good thing anyway, son. It would be better to apply for an economics major at the State University. So our family won't have to be apart. Do you know how hard it was to get in there? Ugh, I can't do this right now. I'm done. Dinner with mom tonight was super awkward. It was just me and her, as Will was simmering in his room, and Patty, well, I don't know where she was. Afterward, I passed by her room and overheard a whimpering sound. I peeked through the gap in the door and saw Will also trying to calm Patty. James is now insisting on breaking up with me. If mom hadn't come to my company and bragged that her daughter was the manager's girlfriend, the story wouldn't have reached my boss and neither of us would be in this mess. I know, right? Mom never cared about us before, but now she thinks she can just waltz back into our lives and do whatever she wants? I've had enough of this. We're both over 18 now. Let's just move out. Oh, no, 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 no! Look at their determined eyes. I couldn't let this happen. What about me? Please don't go. I'm not 18 yet. Don't leave me alone with mom. I beg you. Both of them gasped when they saw me. Then after a moment of silence, Will spoke up. Okay, we won't go. But at least we need to get things back to normal. I mean, back to just the three of us and Nanny Randy living in this house. And so, Will suggested we pull a bunch of pranks that would annoy mom so much she'd end up leaving. But they were all busy with their studies and work, so they left it to me to carry out the pranks. Okay then, I'm ready. You can see how my mom was addicted to cola from the pile of empty cans over there. She often did midnight dashes to the convenience store when she ran out. So, my first plan was to make all the cola she's just bought disappear time after time. <laughs> Frustrated much? However, she was strangely calm and acted like it's no big deal at all, and even bought a drinking helmet to make sure her coke was always with her. Attempt failed. Move on to the second plan. Hide the Nintendo Switch. Why, you ask? Every night, mom made us play on that thing with her, and honestly speaking, she was the worst player ever, but she wouldn't accept it, and kept making us play those boring games with her until she won. Now, no switch, no troubles, right? Wrong! As having nothing to do, she came up with much more dumb things to ask us to do with her. From teaching her to cook, gardening, and even doing yoga with her. Having mom around is like caring for a toddler. She needs constant care and attention. It's tiring. I can't bear it anymore. You clearly didn't carry out the tricks properly. You're making the situation even worse, don't you see? <sighs> Looks like we'll have to get the job done ourselves. Oh yeah? Fine. You guys do better then. And so they carried on by using mom's ultimate fear of spiders. She's terrified of them. Even the teeny tiny ones were enough to cause her to climb onto a chair in fright until one of us removed it. So, Patty asked me to buy fake spiders online. Then she hid them all over our house. But this time, without panicking, she even picked it up and tossed it in our direction, which freaked us out instead. So, Will decided it was his turn to take some action. He planned that one evening, I would distract Randy, and in the meantime, Will would throw a feast at home then swiftly drag all his friends out, leaving a huge mess for mom. Despite never lifting a finger on cleaning, mom is actually a clean person, so it would definitely drive her crazy. But nope, once again, it didn't go as planned when Will and Patty came home to find Randy there, helping mom clean up the whole mess. Of course, I was the one who got the blame, again. Janice, you told us you were able to get Randy away from the house for a day, didn't you? I... I did ask her to take me to Dad's, but like midway there, she realized she forgot her phone and insisted on going back. Oh, stop with all the excuses. You're so useless and always do things by halves. The spider trick must have also failed because you bought some cheap ones that look too obviously fake. Yeah, perhaps you've been bought off by Mom, aren't you? Spill it! Ugh, are they seriously accusing me of betrayal right now? Enough! If you're that good, then do it all yourself! I stormed off without any extra words to them. The next morning, while watching Netflix, I heard Patty and Will arguing. It turned out Patty let her boyfriend use her car and he forgot to come pick her up to work. So she's trying to borrow Will's bike so she wouldn't be late for a meeting. But Will wouldn't let her because he had an important dance workshop to attend. 
Don't your dumb class just always repeat the same wriggle moves? Take the bus instead. You won't die if you're a little late. It's not my fault your gold digging boyfriend forgot to pick you up in your own freaking car. You should have broken up with a jerk like him ages ago. They continued quarreling for a while until I saw Will launch his way down from upstairs shouting. Fine, just take it. Has anyone ever been able to stop you from anything, bossy patty? And he headed straight outside to his bike, then came back after a bit, probably to get some air to calm down. Ugh, would these two give it a rest? How are we meant to figure out a way to win against mom when they couldn't even go a day without bickering? Right then, mom walked in and told me she was going to bake the cake patty had shown her how to do yesterday. Oops, but I forgot to buy eggs. I wonder if Will needs to use the bike today. I'll borrow it just for a bit. Ha! Great! If mom took the bike, then both of my annoying siblings would have to stop squabbling about it. Right? Yes, mom. Take it. Will said he was gonna take the bus today. It'll be faster to cycle to the grocery store anyway. Then mom hopped on the bike and shakily rode off. After a while, Will and Patty went out to the yard and of course, the bike was no longer there. After I told them that mom had already taken the bike, Will stopped dead. Because the truth was that he had purposely broken the brake so that Patty wouldn't take it. Patty tried calling mom but she didn't pick up. Then came a call from Randy. She told us that mom had crashed the bike and had been hospitalized. Oh no. We rushed there immediately. Unfortunately, apart from a ligament sprain, she's fine. It could have been much worse, but that meant she had to wear a bandage for a whole month to stabilize her leg. Ugh, this was all our fault, so now we had no choice but to whimper to mom's every demand. Mom insisted I spoon feed her all of her meals. When I mentioned that there was nothing wrong with her hands, she told me that the trauma to her leg had affected her entire body. She made Patty light loads of candles, play soothing melodies, and rearrange her bedroom furniture so she had a relaxing space to heal. And she got Will to download her old movies for her and feed her popcorn while she watched them on repeat. Of course, we were really worried about her and hoped she'd recover as soon as possible, but honestly, her ridiculous demands were going too far. Then, one day, she insisted we go to a picnic, as sitting inside all day was making her depressed. So, we did exactly just that. Then, while we were walking on a slope, I dropped my bag and bent down to pick it up. Oops, I forgot to lock the wheelchair's wheels! I gasped as I saw mom whiz down the hill. But immediately, she hopped out of the chair and landed on her feet perfectly fine. Will and Patty stared in confusion at mom's casque de like performance. What about me? <laughs> nah, I'm not surprised at all, cause I was the one who set this whole thing up to expose mom. Nanny Randy has told me everything. I know she has been helping you dodging our tricks, as well as carrying out that fake bike accident. Please, why do you have to make life so difficult for us? You never even cared about us, did you? As soon as I finished, mom burst into tears. Then she began to pour her heart out. As it turned out, after her career finished, all the fortune, glory, friends, colleagues, and even men who once said that they'd love her for the rest of their lives, turned their backs on her. She was extremely lonely and needed us, her children, more than ever. Now I only have three of you. In the past, I didn't fulfill my responsibilities as a mother, and I know I let you all down. But now I realize my mistakes. I only did what I did because I wanted to draw you back close to me. Please, forgive me. Give her a chance, kids. Although your mother's actions were somewhat misjudged, she only did them because she genuinely cares about you. Janice, she worried your partying was causing you to neglect your studies. Well, she didn't want your dancing dreams leading to showbiz nightmares like hers. And Patty, trust your mom, she was right this time. Turns out, mom once caught James, the manager, aka Patty's boyfriend, secretly dating the receptionist. <laughs> so she intentionally made a fuzz at Patty's office to deter the third wheel. However, what came after didn't go as she expected and led to such a mess. But now, mission complete. We came here to catch Patty's cheating boyfriend red-handed. Or should I say, her ex-boyfriend. And of course, we made sure he paid for a worthy price for his actions. Ah, <sighs> justice has been served. <laughs> now, to relax. Patty and mom are getting along much better now. They even look more like an endearing couple of sisters than mother and daughter. <laughs> Will's taking mom to one of his contemporary dance shows, so she can see how important it is to him. And me? 
I may be the youngest in the family, but while Will's away, it's my job to make sure mom has someone to lean on. And I'm glad to take on this role. Maybe having my mom around isn't actually bad after all. Who put those books on the upper shelf? And why were my clothes in the closet reorganized? Did she seriously go into my room and rearrange my stuff? Unbelievable! Avery, dinner's ready. Okay, Dad, wait a sec. My dad shouted back. What's taking you so long? Come down now. Dinner is getting cold. Ugh, okay, I'm coming. As I walked into the kitchen, I gave her a resentful look. What were you doing? You know dinner's always at six. Well, that's because she went into my room and reorganized everything. It was like Hurricane Katrina stopped by my room. I had to put everything back where it was. You must be wondering why I had this attitude towards my mom. Well, first, she isn't my mom. She's my stepmom. And second, I just couldn't stand her. You see, my parents divorced when I was 15. And after just six months, my dad started dating Rose. My first impressions weren't great. I mean, look at her. Okay, she's kind of beautiful, but her style just doesn't fit her age. She has this whole wannabe rocker thing going on. No, I'm serious. She even has a tank top that says, I'm a rocker mom. My actual mom was the total opposite of Rose. She looks how a mom's meant to, with her elegant clothes and polite demeanor. And that's also how she raised me to be. Then there's the age difference. Rose is a decade younger than Dad. Suspicious? What if she was only after his money? I thought they wouldn't last. But then one year later, they announced that they were getting married. So, yeah, you can see where my hate was coming from. That's enough of me telling you about my family. Let's go back to this boring dinner. My dad just gently said, Rose was just helping you. She didn't mean it. Now let's dig in. This smells delicious, honey. Ugh, whatever. I rolled my eyes and sat at the table. I looked down and couldn't believe my eyes. It was spinach and sausage lasagna, Mom's signature dish. How dare Rose copy it? First, she rearranged my room, and now she wanted to replace my mom? Talk about a real-life evil stepmom. No way I was going to eat that. So I stood up, said I wasn't hungry, and started walking off. Dad stood up and was about to yell at me, but Rose stopped him. Whatever. I still ran upstairs and slammed my door shut. The next day, when I came home from school, I saw that Rose had a few friends over for beer and pizza in the living room. Look at them. They looked like they were having a band meeting. Normally, women their age have tea parties, not fast food fests. Hey, Avery. Rose greeted me. I just ignored her and went upstairs. But suddenly, I heard one of her friends say, What a stubborn kid. Doesn't she have manners? If I were you, I would show the kid who's the boss around here. Jesus, her friends were awful just like her. Whatever, I didn't care what they said. But then Rose replied, Hey, don't talk about her like that. Avery's a lovely girl. She's just had a lot going on the past two years. Every child would behave the same after their parents' divorce, don't they? She just needs a little time adjusting. Oh, wow. I didn't expect those words coming from Rose. She actually stood up for me? Maybe, just maybe, I've misjudged her. Maybe I should try and give her a fairer chance? So that evening, when I saw her watching a movie... I walked over with a big bowl of popcorn and asked if I could join her. Rose looked shocked, like she'd seen a ghost or something. Then she gave me a big smile and said, Of course, I would really love that. I sat down next to her, and we watched Mad Max together. Oh, wow. There was a lot of violence and some weird-looking characters. Normally, I don't watch these kinds of films. I'm more of a rom-coms girl. But that movie was really... Um, interesting. We talked during it, and I must say Rose is actually kinda cool. We were both laughing when I heard someone coughing behind me. 
I turned around to see my mom standing there with a frown on her face. Avery? Why didn't you return my calls and messages? Oh, I haven't introduced my mom to you yet. This is my beautiful mom, Melanie. She's a kind, gentle, elegant woman, and also a bit disciplined. But that's okay. I still love my mom very much. Mom? What are you doing here? I called you a dozen times, but you didn't answer. Clearly, you're preoccupied. I got worried, so I swung by to check on you. Oh, sorry, Mom. Rose and I were having so much fun that I didn't notice my phone. My mom knitted her brows and asked, Are we still on for shopping tomorrow? You need a new outfit for the debate contest, right? Yeah, of course. I will meet you at the mall after school. Oh, you two are going shopping? That's so cool. Can I join? At that moment, I thought, what a great idea. I mean, so far, they seem to get along okay. But what I didn't know was that a war between my mom and my stepmom had just launched. Rose gave me an excited smile. But mom, on the other hand, didn't look so thrilled. Maybe she was still mad that I missed her calls? So the next day after school, I went outside and saw my mom standing by her car. Oh, was she waiting for me? I was about to walk toward her when I suddenly noticed she was giving dirty looks to someone. Oh my god, Rose was waiting on the other side of the street. I quickly jumped behind some bushes to hide from them. Don't tell me the two were here to pick me up. Suddenly, my phone rang. It was mom. There's no way I was deciding between them. So I told her I was already on my way to the mall. Ugh. Now, let's talk about my fun family day out at the mall. Hmm, it was a disaster. My mom and Rose have very different style, ofs, so my mom chose this elegant black vest and skirt for me, but Rose thought I looked like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. No offense, she's a badass who brought justice to women, but Rose was kind of right. That outfit just didn't work for me. Then Rose chose this red dress for me, but, oh man, that's kind of revealing. They were constantly dragging me from this shop to the other like they were playing tug of war. And I was the freaking rope. I couldn't handle it anymore. Therefore, I just chose any dress so they'd stop throwing clothes in my face. On the way out of the mall, we passed a piercing shop. I've been wanting a helix piercing at the upper cartilage of my ear. They look so cool. I asked mom, but she profusely refused. Her own words were, it would make you look rebellious. His mom was still strict as always. Nonsense. Rose snorted. Melanie, Avery's old enough to make her own decisions. If she wants a piercing, then let her. Then she turned to me and said, Come, I will take you inside. Oh my god, I couldn't believe it. I glanced at mom, and she looked like she was about to explode with anger. But Rose had a point. I'm already 16 for crying out loud. After 15 minutes, Rose and I came out. Oh, thank God. Did you reconsider getting that ear piercing? Oh, yeah. Rose said that a nose piercing would suit me better. What? Uh-oh. Maybe the nose piercing wasn't such a good idea, because the tension between them was now catastrophic. Hmm. I needed a way to bring them together. So I came up with a brilliant plan. I arranged a holiday in Brazil for us all. I have a friend there, Pedro. He was an exchange student at my school, so he could show us around. Dad was in on the plan. At the last minute, he pretended to be busy and canceled his spot. Perfect. Now Rose and Mom would have plenty of bonding time. As soon as we walked into the hotel lobby, they started fighting over who got to share a room with me. What's wrong with them? We just landed in Brazil. So I took the keys from the receptionist and told them they were sharing, because I'll be by myself. <laughs> then in the evening, after we all got some rest, I waited for them in the lobby. Man, what's taking them so long? Suddenly, I saw two women walking over, and they were pushing each other. My God, it was Rose and Mom. I tried to keep calm and said, Jesus. Can you two please stop acting like kindergarten kids? Mom sneered. Well, Rose over here took a 45-minute shower 
while I urgently needed to use the bathroom. You know how sensitive my stomach is. Rose rolled her eyes. That's because I have a strict beauty routine to follow. At least you got some sleep. I didn't, thanks to your bulldozer snoring. I certainly did not. Then they began to stare off like two UFC fighters. I shouted, Enough already! Listen up! I just made a dinner reservation for you two to get to know each other better. I have plans with Pedro, so I'll catch you both later. They were about to refuse, but I gave them this really intense look. Well, at least you're having fun. You two should hit a bar. Nothing can top some Brazilian bars. No drinking! And be back by 10 p.m. tops. Yeah, yeah, I know. Have fun! I waved at them and left the hotel. The next morning, I saw them talking to each other. Actually talking, not bickering. So I walked over to them and asked, Well, how was dinner? Then they told me it was actually really great. They were able to put their differences aside and got along. Success! <laughs> so now I could enjoy the rest of the trip. After breakfast, Pedro came by to take us on a hiking trip in the forest. It was so wonderful. The fresh air, the birds singing. Well, maybe except for the heat and the mosquitoes. Pedro wanted to bring us to this spot he said was perfect for watching the sunset. Awesome! It was all going well at first, but then as Rose avoided a tree branch, it accidentally hit my mom. My God, you hit me on purpose, didn't you? What? That's absurd. I was just avoiding the branch. Oh, please. As if. Are you saying that I'm lying? Hey, guys, stop it. Let's be more understanding and talk things out. Like how you did it last night, okay? That's when I found out that they were just pretending to be friends so that I didn't set up any more dinners for them. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. After their friendship act was exposed... They began speed hiking, like they were in a competition or something. But, yep, after only 15 minutes, they were exhausted and couldn't even stand straight anymore. I began to shout at them. This is great. Your dumb feud is ruining my vacation. Then I walked away to avoid them, but of course, not too far. As I walked, I tried to think of another plan to get them close. Then I realized I'd wandered further away from the group. Okay, Avery, don't panic. Pedro had given me a map of the forest. I just needed to get to that marked X. It sounded easy. Trust me, it wasn't. I walked for hours and still couldn't find the spot. Oh no, it was getting dark and I was totally exhausted. I sat on the ground and couldn't hold back my tears. I was about to lose hope when I suddenly heard Rose and Mom's voices. Oh, great. I was lost and could still hear them arguing in my head. I must be losing my mind. But wait. Suddenly, they appeared from behind some trees. It was really them. I couldn't believe it. I ran into their arms and gave them both the biggest hug ever and cried like a baby. Before we went to the airport to head home, Pedro came to say goodbye. Thanks for the hiking trip and also carrying out my plan. No problem. Your plan was definitely crazy, but it totally worked. After you went missing, they actually teamed up to find you. They helped one another when one tripped down or got exhausted, and kept each other motivated. Pedro grinned at me, then continued. I too was freaking out when I didn't see you at our meeting point. Luckily, I still found you. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that pretending to be lost was a part of my plan, but what I didn't expect was to actually get lost. Thank God for Pedro. And you know what? After that incident, my mom and Rose grew close. Actually, a bit too close, I think. <laughs> they even sometimes hang out without me. Can you believe it? Turns out, even though they have two very different personalities and styles, they still have one big thing in common. They both love me. Annyeonghaseyo! I'm Minzi from Seoul. Do you believe conspiracy theories are real? 
Because I do. Before I tell you my paranormal story, please like and subscribe. Nothing much to say about myself. I'm timid, introverted, but above all, I have a big ambition to webtoon horror category. Ahem! It's one of a kind, right? I've spent sleepless nights on that. Go kneel in the hallway for 30 minutes. Now! Aw, oh, man. Creepy Mincy is at it again. She wants to haunt the whole class with those ugly doodles or something? Ugly? Well, not as ugly as your... your grandmother. The whole class gasped at my insensitive words. But it's that girl. Supin's fault first. No matter how invested I was into my draft, it only ended up another chance for Supin and her posse to laugh at me. And well, thanks to my poor communication skills, no one wants to be my friend. Well, except Hajun, my childhood friend. He's always been so nice to me. Not to mention he's handsome, friendly, and smart. You could tell I had a crush on him, right? But of course, I have no guts to tell him. <sighs> One day I was riding my bike around when I suddenly saw flyers from Blackwood Publishing, the biggest publisher on Webtoon. They're looking for a comic collaborator. Oh, wow. I could send mine to them. But would I stand a chance? I bet the candidates are way more talented than me. As, I guess I better stop dreaming. Just then a skater kid dashed towards me. I managed to dodge him, but ended up crashing onto the pavement fence. I felt myself flip through the air, and then everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the hospital bed. Mom and Dad were beside me. They looked like they couldn't believe it, then burst into tears. Mincy, honey, you're finally awake. Thank God, you've been in a coma for the whole month. We were worried sick. Hold on a sec. A whole month in a coma? Was I that seriously injured? It took me a few days to recover and process all of this before going back to school. Bet these kids didn't even notice I was missing class for a month, though. But suddenly, someone sprung on my back. Supin? Ah, oh, here you are, Urichingu! Let's go shopping today! The dress you picked me last time was perfect for my date! W what dress? Am I friends with these mean girls now? And not just them. Everyone else seemed to be friendly to me all of a sudden. They gave me cookies, carried my food tray, and even lent me their notebooks. It's weird, but kind of nice, though. <laughs> Except the only person I cared about just straight up ignored me. Hey, Hajun, wait up. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's none of your concern anyway. Oh, I just want to check in on you. <sighs> Could today get any weirder? Yes, it did. When I came home, I suddenly received an email from Blackwood Publishing. Congratulations! Your digital comic is now officially published on our website. To celebrate your success, please come to our office tomorrow. Huh? Is this a prank? I quickly checked, and it's not. My comics were literally on the headliner. But how? I mustered all the courage and went to the publisher. One step in, and I was overwhelmed by all the facilities. It was all so new to me. But just then, a group of people flocked around me and babbled to me nonstop, like they'd known me before. Yeah, our faith boy group BOF, Boys Over Flowers, is holding a concert tonight. Those opas make my emo heartbeat like crazy. Hey, you should come with us. It's going to be so much fun. Eek! Oh, but didn't those boys only lip sync and dance half-heartedly? I even heard people say it's a waste of money going to their concert. Guys, did I say something wrong? Suddenly, I got this chill down my spine. Someone's hands were crawling around my waist. My boo-boo's here. Ah, pervert! I turned around and slapped him in the face. Oh, why did you do that? It's me who should ask this. Why did you touch me? Are you serious? Wait, are you still sulking with me? What? I'm sorry, okay? Now your boyfriend's ready for some snuggles. Boyfriend? Last time I checked, I still had the biggest crush on Hajun. How did I settle for this dandy? The guy was extremely clingy. He wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. Um, don't you have any work to do? Work? I am. I'm tending to the artwork of my life. You! <laughs> uh, sure. He also kept insisting on seeing my webtoon draft to help me polish it. Help my butt? He only messed it all up. Not to mention, everything is completely new to me, but everyone acted like I'm so used to all of this. This didn't feel right. Later the day I told my parents about this, and they said the doctor did mention possible memory loss due to brain injury. Hmm, makes sense. But why did they seem all anxious? Over the next few days, I tried to cope with my new life, even though it didn't make any sense at all. Like, I now had my favorite seat in the canteen. You nerds are sitting on Minzy's spot. Move! And apparently, I got a new hobby of skipping school now. 
What's the matter? You've done this so many times before. <laughs> Why did I even do this? Hajun, on the other hand, still kept distance from me. Until today, we had a project discussion. I tried to break the ice, but he only replied coldly. Why are you here? This whole month you've ditched me to hang out with your hot friends. And now you suddenly want to talk to me again? The, the whole month? What do you mean? You suddenly turned 180 degrees and became this attention seeker. You even pulled stupid pranks on those mean girls and got them to worship you as their leader. B but I was in a coma the whole month. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No. Why would I joke about something like that? Then who was the Mincy I saw every day at school the past month? Was he saying I was in two places at once? How was that possible? Hajun came up with a bunch of conspiracy theories, then concluded that I had an imposter, and she had been replacing me while I was in the hospital. It made perfect sense, but so bizarre at the same time. Seeing how freaked out I was, Hajun gently comforted me, saying he'd help me figure this out. I knew it. He still cared about me deep down. While we were discussing, Su Pin and her clique came interrupting us. Hey, Mincy! What are you doing with this geek? Remember our group meetup today with the Ansan Highs boys? Meetup? Uh, no, I don't think I can- Of course she remembers. Can I come too? I'll keep my mouth zipped. Fine! Now hurry up! Psst, what are you up to? Your imposters must have known about this meetup, so she might be there. This is our chance to catch her. Except, the imposter was nowhere to be found, while well, I was stuck with these self-obsessed dudes. Where's your sass, Mincy? Introduce yourself! Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm Mincy. You can call me Sugar Mincy. Because I'm sweet as pie and you sure want to take a, a bite. The whole room was dead silence. <laughs> Girl, you got no riz. Wonder why you can't date anyone. Everyone was laughing at my face. Luckily, Hajun grabbed my hand and took me out of there. Here's much better. But I couldn't help but thinking how my life had turned upside down because of that imposter. You all right? You don't have to force yourself into a mold that isn't for you. You're special for who you are. And I prefer this you rather than that imposter. I could feel something churning in my stomach. I'm so glad I always have him by my side. The next morning, Su Pin and her clique suddenly came to apologize for laughing at me. But why? Uh, didn't you come back last night and snapped at us? Told us to publicly apologize to you today? I did? So the copycat did come to the karaoke. Did she intentionally stalk me? Later that day, I went to tell Hajun about this. But why did she have to do that? I mean, she tried to stand up for you, right? I don't know. It must be part of her scheme or something. I have to find her ASAP. Suddenly, I got the notification of the Mean Girls live streaming at a cafe. Wow, guess who it is, guys? Oh, our little rich lady is a waitress. And she dared to look down on us all the time. She steered her cam towards the poor girl they were talking about. And she looked exactly like me. It's her! Hajun and I immediately rushed to the cafe and saw Su Pin and the imposter was about to jump at each other. What's going on here? Mincy? Wh what? Why are there two Mincy's? <laughs> it's a g -g 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 ghost! Guys, run! You! Who are you? And why did you pretend to be me, you imposter? Mincy, finally we meet. I'm your twin sister. Minha! Sister? We're related? But mom and dad never told me I had a long lost sister. Because you're adopted. They didn't know you had a twin sister who just got adopted before you. You're lying. I'm not. I didn't know this either until my mom was in her final moments. Mom had been sick for a while. So one day she called me to her bed, told me the truth before she drew her last breath. After that, I came to find you, but you were already in the hospital by then. You did wake up after surgery, but once you saw me, you immediately had a seizure and fell back into a coma again. Your parents and I agreed it was best for you if I stayed away and waited until you fully recovered. Meanwhile, you decided to live my life for me? Believe it or not, I actually wanted to know what my long-lost twin sister's like. How she's doing? Turns out you're a very talented comic artist, but you're always so insecure. And you're not doing well with the kids at school either. So I wanted to help you out. Sending your webtoon draft, working at the publisher, and fixing those mean girls wagons. I just went with it and ended up getting too wrapped up. Really, did you get wrapped up in dating a random guy under my name too? And what about school? Did my parents agree to let you replace me? It was my idea and I persuaded them. They're just worried about you. I didn't ask for any of these in the first place. Thanks to you, I've become a stranger to my own life. You're happy now? Then I ran away, never wanting to see her again. Still, the worst part was, my parents lied to me. Why did you do it? 
You didn't tell me I'm adopted, and now you let a stranger replace me? Do you really see me as your child? Minty, honey, of course you're our daughter. Nothing could ever change that. We were afraid you'd be sad if you knew you were adopted. Truthfully, we love you more than you can ever imagine. It's a lot to process, but I had to be strong and stay focused. But soon, whisperings caught my ears. Did you notice Mincy recently is different and even a little bit dull? Where's the cheeky Mincy we're used to? Hey, do you get that bad vibe from Mincy lately? Somehow she'd gone back to being a sullen, creepy nerd again. God, why did everyone keep comparing me to that imposter? Hey, you all right? No, I'm not. Everyone seemed to like Minha and she'd only been here for a month. But nobody cared about me. I do care about you. You always got me. Your handsome friend, ready to the rescue. <laughs> Whatever you say. Come to think of it, your sister only meant well. Despite her way, all she wants is to help you to be more open and show your hidden talents to the world. What Hajun said got me thinking that night. Maybe he's right. If it hadn't been for her, my webtoon would have been forever locked in my iPad. Besides, she's only got me as a family. I've got to see her now. Hey, I came to apologize. I could see you only meant well. And I was only acting ungrateful. I'm sorry. And also, thank you, Uni. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault too for acting on my own and getting myself to fall in love with Si Wu. I haven't told him yet, but I will find the chance. Sorry for dragging you into my stuff. I leapt into her embrace and felt the happy tears running down my cheeks. After the teary reunion, we spend hours catching up with each other. It's like we're reading each other's minds. Must be the twin bond. <laughs> I even invited her to my house, and we had a good time. For the next couple days, I only focused on the webtoon and getting to know myself better. With Hajun's help, I now felt more comfortable and confident speaking with others. One day at the publisher, while I was having a little chit-chat break, a colleague rushed in. Minzi, Minzi, did you hear the news? Your webtoon won the first prize of comic award. Comic? The most renowned award in webtoon? Oh my god, I'm dreaming, right? My hard work finally bore fruits. I was celebrating with my colleague when out of nowhere, Si Wu dragged me out. You better announce me as the co-author. I helped you with the sketches, the script, the coloring, yada yada yada, remember? What? You were only messing it up. Do you even know what the story is about? Babe, don't challenge me. Or else, I would tell the director, aka my dad, to kick you out. And by the way, let's break up. Excuse me? You really think I like you? Oh, please. I only do it for your webtoon, babe. Ugh, that dandy jerk. I knew he was no good, but what could I do now? Later, I told Minha everything, and she was heartbroken and begged me to help her sneak into Siwoo's office. So I did. Siwoo, please don't leave me. How could I live without you? Oh, it'll be hard, because I'm irresistible. <laughs> but you gotta let go, babe. You have nothing else to offer me. I already know you don't love me, but I do love you. And I already put a love spell on you. You'll forever be haunted by me. <laughs> then, Minha fainted, crashed on the floor. Scaredy cat Si Wu was freaking out. Hey, hey, you're not gone, right? Suddenly, the light turned off. What in the Holy Spirit's going on? The light turned on again, and the guy stopped screaming until he saw me. Hi, babe. Ah, what? Why are, what are you? You don't recognize me. It's me, Minji, in spirit form. Stay the heck away from me. After every despicable thing you've done to me. Please, please. Come with me, you crooked. To, to, where? To the other side. He was so scared his eyes went white. Then he fainted. <laughs> Serves you right. And let me introduce my Ekip with Minha, who should win Oscars for that performance. And Hajun, who's behind the light effect. Didn't think of that, did you? After that, Siwu kept insisting I was some spiritual force that haunted this place. Then eventually, he quit the job. And of course, I had the full copyright of my webtoon and was eligible to receive the comic award. My career has just begun as I decided to continue to work at Blackwood. Mom and Dad also decided to adopt Minha into our family, and we could finally be together. That's the magic I wanted to tell you. This unexpected event changed my life for the better. Chance doesn't come twice, right? You have to grasp it. By the way, I want to ask, do you guys have any unexpected events that changed your entire life? Tell us in the comments below. Hang on, here's one more thing I have to do for the old shy me. Hajun, uh, I've been wanting to tell you something. The past event got me thinking. 
If I don't start telling you how I feel now, I might regret it later. So, Kim Hajun, I like you. So, so much. Finally, it took you that long. When you were in hospital, you weren't the Minzi I knew, which freaked me out thinking what if I couldn't see the real you anymore. It's comforting that you're still here, cause I got a huge crush on you too. Hi everyone, I'm Emma, and this is my story about what can happen when someone gets so jealous of you, they try to ruin your life. It all started with my mom. She's a beautiful woman, and I took after her. So, when she divorced my dad and we moved to a new town, obviously I started a new school. That's when the trouble began. I became popular very quickly, but not with the girls. It was the boys who went wild for me, and it drove me crazy. I just wanted a normal life with some nice friends and it wasn't my fault my mom had passed her beauty down to me. Anyway, there was one girl in particular called Anna who was having none of it. She was also pretty, but she was seriously jealous of me from day one. I remember that first week hearing some girls whispering in the bathroom that I was prettier than Anna. And then Anna walked in and she looked like she wanted to scream. After that, she went out of her way to destroy my life. At my old school, I'd been a cheerleader, so I signed up to join at this new school. Little did I know, Anna was head cheerleader. She pretended to be all nice to me at practice. Then at the first football game we were performing and going through our routine which Anna had choreographed, she made me go at the top of the pyramid, balancing on top of everyone. I was so nervous, but I knew I could do it. Anyway, as I was climbing up there, I suddenly saw Anna whisper to the girl next to her and then she moved and the whole pyramid started to fall. She obviously wanted to hurt me, but it backfired and we all fell on top of her. All we heard was a scream as her arm snapped. Afterwards, she told everyone I was clumsy and it was all my fault. But I knew she'd planned it, so I'd be the one to get hurt. And that's not all. Prom was coming up, and my mom had made me the most beautiful long silk dress. I felt like a princess and couldn't wait to see what everyone would think. Of course, Anna was also wearing a beautiful dress, but everyone was staring at me. I saw her roll her eyes, and then when I was dancing with two of my friends, I felt something rip. I looked behind me and Anna was standing on my dress. I couldn't believe it. I tried to move but she wouldn't budge and it wouldn't stop ripping. Suddenly, I was standing there with a mini dress and I wanted to cry. But then my friend quickly got some scissors and kneaded it up. And believe it or not, it actually looked even cooler than before. <laughs> Once again, Anna tried to make me look like a fool, but it all fell on her. Everyone was so impressed with my dress and I even started a new trend where wearing mini dresses to prom. However, despite all these silly pranks, there was one thing that Anna had that I didn't. A boyfriend. She was dating Isaac, one of the top athletes in school, and anytime she was with him and saw me, she would always smirk and look me up and down as if to say she had a boyfriend and I didn't. I didn't care for her silly competitiveness though. I wasn't even bothered about being single, all I wanted was for her to leave me alone. Pretty soon, we became like enemies. I just couldn't stand her and her annoying behaviors, but then things got worse. One weekend, my mom drove me to a game and insisted on staying to watch my cheerleading performance. Later, I spotted her chatting with some men and she looked like she was having a good time. I was happy to see her smile that brightly after a long time. And as expected, not long after that, she introduced him to me, but you won't believe who it was. It turned out he was Anna's dad, out of all people on earth. And worse still, they were now hopelessly in love and even wanted to get married. Oh no! If I knew who he was, I would have broken them up from the start. I couldn't be Anna's stepsister. This was my worst nightmare. And when Anna found out about this, she started to treat me even worse. One time, I was walking in the canteen when suddenly someone pushed me. I went flying and ended up bumping into a boy who fell over too. It was so sore, but the pain quickly disappeared when I realized who the boy was. It was Liam, the new hog guy who just joined the athletes club. I kept apologizing to him, but he just laughed and said it was okay, then helped me get up and took me to the nurse's office to make sure I wasn't hurt. 
Afterwards, he even asked for my number. I couldn't believe it. I was actually blushing over a boy. Then I went back to the canteen and there was Anna staring at me all angry. I didn't even have to think twice about who'd push me. Obviously Anna. Well, thanks to her silly prank, now I had a cute guy interested in me. And for once, I was actually interested in him too. It didn't take long before we became a couple. And then we were pretty much attached at the hip. I also joined his athlete's practice. And because Isaac was there too, Anna was always there as well. She just glared at me with dagger eyes whenever she saw me. I didn't get what her problem was. Anyway, one time, the athletes club suggested we all go see a movie, with girlfriends included. In the theater, Anna sat behind me and kept kicking my chair. I turned over and asked her to stop, but she wouldn't. I could feel the anger welling up inside me and I thought I was gonna explode, but I didn't want to embarrass myself in front of Liam. So, I decided I needed to stay as far away from Anna as possible. That wasn't easy though. Our school had organized a big athletes competition with another school and so Liam was always practicing. I always sat in the stands and watched him. And on the day of the competition, Anna came and sat next to me. I almost froze. What was she up to? Instead of pulling some prank, she handed me a bottle of water and said, Hey Emma, I don't want to be your enemy anymore. We're basically going to be sisters, so let's just make up, okay? Then she turned to me and smiled shyly. Whoa, well, that was a surprise. I felt relieved though and said, I thought this day would never come. I hated things being all awkward between us. Anna just smiled at me again. And then we came down to the field where Isaac and Liam were warming up for the race to wish them luck. Finally, the competition began. Anna and I sat together, cheering our boyfriends on. As expected, Liam won first prize and Isaac came in second. I was so happy for Liam and ran out to the field to hug him. But suddenly, some of the organizers approached him and escorted him off the field. I had no idea what was going on, but I saw Anna smirking at me and then walking away. What was that for? After a while, the organizers came back and said Liam had been caught doping. So now the first prize would go to Isaac. What? There was no way Liam would do something illegal like that. He'd never used any kind of substance to perform well. He was just naturally talented. Everyone started saying mean things about Liam and I couldn't bear it. So I went to find him. I saw him sitting in the corner of the locker room looking shocked. When he saw me, he shook his head and said, I didn't use doping. You have to believe me, Emma. I'm not that kind of guy. All I did was drink the water you gave me. Oh my god, the water bottle! Anna had given it to me and I must have passed it on to Liam to hydrate before the competition. I thought she was being nice, but of course she wasn't. This was Anna we were talking about. She'd planned this. She was seriously too much. I ran to find her and I was raging. She was happily talking to the other athletes, so I grabbed her wrist and pulled her away. How could you? Are you trying to ruin Liam's life? I yelled at her. Anna wasn't even bothered. She just smirked and said, Yup, I am, and so what? I was shaking by that point and I said, You're crazy. Why did you do it? What has Liam ever done to you? I did it because I hate you. You stole everything from me, including Liam. Huh? I was so confused. Since when did Anna like Liam? Well, Isaac appeared the exact moment and he obviously heard what she said. He started shouting, You told me you did that to help me win, but no, you're a complete liar, so you're just jealous of Emma, huh? Okay then, now you can run after Liam as you wish, we're over. Anna was shocked and tried to explain that she'd done it for him, that he was misunderstanding her, but he wouldn't even look at her. He said, You won't get away with this, Anna. I'm gonna tell the organizers right now. Anna tried to get him to stop, but he pushed her away, and she ended up falling onto the ground where she burst in tears. Ha! She deserved it. I went back to find Liam and the organizers announced that there were some problems with the results and that the competition would be repeated the following weekend. Liam looked so happy and hugged me. Everything worked out in the end. Well, at least for Liam and me. Liam still won first place and now he's going to compete in the international competition. As for Anna and Isaac, well, they broke up and Anna moved to another city with her mom. 
and Isaac got kicked out of the athletes club. On another note, my mom and Anna's dad are getting married soon. And even though I can't stand Anna, I'm still going to go because it'll mean a lot to my mom. At least I don't need to live in the same house as Anna. She's got to be the most jealous person I've ever met. And it's not done her any good. Envy really is poison. It's much better to just be happy with what you have right now, right? Hi, I'm Izzy, and my grandparents brought me up. It's not that my parents weren't around at all, it's just that they worked in New York, and, well, they were workaholics, so I ended up staying with my grandparents. My sister, Beatrice, or B as we all call her, lived with my parents. I don't know why this was exactly, it just kind of happened. My parents visited every Christmas and occasionally during spring break, but not having them around was normal for me. Then one summer, my parents showed up with B and told me they were moving to town and we were all going to live together. At first, this was weird as I was so used to barely seeing them, but then I decided it could be good, right? But, well, living with a little sister was more complicated than I thought. It's kind of bothersome. In fact, B even pushed me, an average drama-free girl at school, into a bunch of nonsense scandals. B's a sweet kid, but she's on the shy side and she can be a bit clingy. Probably because she still needed some time to fit into this new place, so she followed me and clung on to me all day long. But I just didn't get why she had to copy everything I did. I wore ripped skinny jeans, so she bought the exact same pair. I wore glitter pink lip gloss, so she did too. I got a new phone for my birthday, and she begged our parents until they caved and gave her one too. That kind of sucked, as I'd waited for ages for a decent phone, and she got one just by nagging. She had her own bedroom, but each night, she came into my room and made me tell her stories about everyone at school, as she said this would help her make new friends faster. We'd chat about school, boys, friends, you know, girl stuff. Then she'd fall asleep in my room. She stayed here pretty much every night. So in the end, her parents bought us bunk beds. But she then went and bragged about everything I told her to her classmates. So they'd think she's cool, since she got to hang out with seniors and knew their stories. One time, she leaked out the secret that my best friend Lee had a crush on Paul. And she told her friends that I was surely going to be spring queen at the next prom. What? I didn't even think about trying out for that. Never! I'm not interested in that kind of attention. And obviously, the rumors got out. Lee stormed up to me, yelling and all, saying she never wanted to be friends again. I tried to explain things to her, but she didn't listen. And for the rest of the day, every time I walked across the hallway, the popular girls would smirk at me and say things like, Who do you think you are? Like, seriously, as if you could be spring queen? I hated this. I just wanted to have a normal, quiet life at school. I didn't like this attention, nor did I have any longing to be spring queen. This made me so mad. So later in the afternoon, I stormed into Bee's classroom during recess, dragged her aside, and told her to stop ruining my life with her big mouth. I didn't have much time to talk to her about exactly what had happened, because I had to return to class. But I made sure to make my point and threw her a dirty look before I left. She looked pretty scared. I stomped back to class, but my tantrum didn't last long because during English Lit, my teacher paired me on a group project with two of my friends and Andy, the cutest guy ever. This was the perfect excuse to use the group study time to organize a meetup at my house. The plan was set. I just needed to come home, put on my cutest outfit, and wait for them to come over. I was so nervous that I didn't really mind about the feud with my sister anymore. I excitedly told her about Andy coming over, and she helped me tidy up my room and braid my hair. They arrived, and studying didn't last long. Soon, we were watching movies and playing games. Then B suggested we play Seven Minutes in Heaven. That's so childish, but the others seemed up for it. Besides, I figured it could work in my favor with Andy. We spun the bottle to decide, and when it was Andy's turn, B asked to spin it for him. Then she winked over at me and Andy. Then, to my horror, the bottle pointed at her. What was that? Is she stealing my crush too? This little brat. She and Andy went into the closet and after seven excruciating minutes, they walked out looking all smiley. I was so mad, but I kept my cool until they left. 
Then I screamed at Bee that she was a horrible, sneaky girl and to stay away from me. It got so heated, Mom had to come and tell me to stop. I slammed my bedroom door shut and even put my dresser in front of it so Bee couldn't come in. The next day, she tried apologizing to me, but I ignored her. She even left a candy bar on my pillow, but I just chucked it in the trash. To make matters worse, Andy approached me at school and went on about the fun he'd had at mine and how cool B was. What? So what exactly did those two do in the closet? This was awful. Then prom day came. I didn't have a date, Lee still wasn't talking to me, and trying to avoid B in my own house was draining. Then Lee called me up excitedly and told me Paul had asked her to prom. I was so happy for her and we made up. She invited me over to get ready for prom at hers. I packed my dress, my makeup, but my eyebrow pencil was missing. I mumbled, Ugh, B, as she must have taken mine again. I knew she was at swimming practice, so I went through her drawer to find my makeup stuff. Nothing. Then I spotted something under her pillow. It looked like the end of a black pencil. This must be it. I took it out, but it wasn't an eyebrow pencil. Just a normal pen. It was in the middle of a notebook. So curious. I pulled it out. That's when I glimpsed my name on the open page. So I picked it up to see what it was. It's her diary. I read through the first few pages. She said she loved me very much and that she was happy that she finally got to live in the same house as me. I found a specific page that was a little ripped. It was the day I yelled at her. I saw tears dried out on her words. She wrote how she really thought I was very beautiful and would win the Spring Queen title, and how she just wanted to help me and Andy get together, so she suggested the seven minutes game. And she tried to aim the bottle at me, but it went wrong. And that when she was in the closet with Andy, she was only saying nice things about me to him. And she also found out that Andy had feelings for me. Also, she wrote that sleeping alone was so scary, but she didn't want to bother me anymore. She said she'd ruined everything and wished she could move back to her old house. I felt so guilty, and I just cried all the way to Lee's place and later told her everything. I was not in the mood for prom anymore, so even though everyone complimented me on my dress, I couldn't enjoy myself. Andy came forward and asked me to dance, but I couldn't quit thinking about B. I apologized to Andy for my bad mood, and he was so understanding, we ended up taking a walk outside, and I vented to him about how I'd misunderstood my sister. Then, suddenly, I spotted her with friends at the photo booth at the entrance. They looked like they were having so much fun, except for her. She looked so sad. I grabbed her arm from behind. She turned around, shocked, then quickly stepped back and went to leave, but I stopped her and told her I was sorry. I hugged her, and we both cried, and continuously said sorry to each other. Then, I suddenly heard my name on the mic inside the venue. She then said, Go, go! They must be crowning you as Spring Queen right now! Told you so! Turns out, I wasn't Spring Queen, but I did make prom court, which I guess is kinda cool. I was wrong to ever be mad at B. She never meant to cause any harm. I know that now. Later that evening, Lee and Paul came over and thanked B as it was basically down to her that they were now together. Then Lee winked at Andy, who was standing next to me, and said, You should also thank B, because it looks like we're having another couple here. Talk about awkward! So we both just shrugged it off and pretended not to understand what she meant. We spent the rest of the night dancing and having a great time. It felt so good to have my best friend and my little sis back in my life. I've now realized that having Bella with me all the time isn't so bad. Yes, she's annoying at times, but all she wanted was to have her big sis around. And I guess I have to admit that I like having my little sis around too. Hey, my name's Vivian, and I hate my sister. Yeah, I know, you probably think I don't mean it, but I do. I really do. At 16, my sister Lena is one year older than me. As little kids, we were never close. It's like she resented me for being born and stealing the attention away from her. She always used to boss me about, knock me over when mom wasn't looking, and steal my stuff. Now, as teenagers, she still does all those things and more. She's just a horrible person. It doesn't help that I'm pretty popular and have loads more friends than she does. Living with Lena is hard, so to help deal with my problems, I keep a diary where I write down all my thoughts and feelings. 
I find that it's really helped me cope with things. I always knew that in Lena's hands, my diary could cause me a lot of damage, so I hid it under the loose floorboard under my bed. Lena didn't have a clue about my secret hiding space. Or so I thought. Then, one day, I came back from a sleepover at my friend Kate's house to discover that the loose floorboards had been removed and my diary had gone. I was so freaked out that I almost puked up. This was bad. This was very, very bad. I ransacked my room just in case I'd accidentally left it out, although I knew this was doubtful as I was super careful with it. Then, Lena appeared in my bedroom door and said to me, Are you looking for something? To my horror, she was holding my diary. I like to think that I'm a good person, but I've done some bad things that I'm not proud of. I've learned from my mistakes and try my hardest to be a better person. But I've written all of the bad things I've ever done in that diary. And now my evil sister knows everything. She opened it up and began reading out the passage I wrote about the time I drank too much at a party and stupidly kissed my friend Kate's boyfriend. I tried explaining to Lena that it happened months ago and it had been a massive mistake, but she just smirked at me. She told me that she would tell Kate what I did unless I did exactly as she asked. I didn't want to do anything for Lena, but I felt like I didn't have a choice. Kate has been my best friend since middle school, and I didn't want to lose her. For the next few days, I felt terrible knowing that Lena had this power over me. She made me do all of her chores, such as cleaning up the dishes and taking out the trash. But I knew this was just the beginning of her commands. One time, I got home from school to my worried parents, saying their credit card was missing. A phone notification told them that someone had spent a hundred dollars with it. I went to my room to find that my sister was already there. She gave me my parents' card and told me to go and return it to them and tell them that I was the one who stole it. I said no, but she pulled out my diary with a smirk. I had no choice but to do it. I told my parents that it was because I wanted this cute dress so badly. My mom looked shocked and kept asking me if it was true because I've always been a good kid. She sighed and forgave me since I had the courage to own up to what I did, but she also looked really disappointed in me. Then one weekend, while I was mowing the lawn, the cute guy next door called me from over the fence and told me that he had two tickets to the cinema that night. He asked if I wanted to join him. Of course, I said yes. Lena must have seen it all from her bedroom window because as soon as I got inside, she stopped me at the door and forced me to tell the guy that I was sick so that she would go instead of me. And the commanding continued. She told me that she hated this one girl at school and that she had a plan for me to follow. The next day during lunch break, she pretended to accidentally spill her soup on that girl's dress. Then, apologizing, she went with her to the bathroom to buy me time so I could steal the girl's homework and throw it away. Her mission impossible went perfectly. No one suspected a thing, and I was so relieved. I was super nervous because I never did things like this before. Then, later that day, I saw the girl crying as she frantically searched her locker for her homework. I felt so bad. I had to stop this. So I skipped the rest of school so I could go home early and search Lena's room for her diary. I looked everywhere, but it turns out my evil sister wasn't dumb enough to keep one. Worse still, she knew that I'd been in her room, and she told me that as punishment, I had to cut my waist-length hair to my chin. Otherwise, she would not only tell people that I kissed Kate's boyfriend, but also that I stole that girl's homework. I'd been growing my hair out for years, but she'd ruined her own hair with bleach and messed it up. She was only making me cut mine out of spite. As I was walking to the hairdressers in town, Kate rang me up. I started crying and told her that Lena was blackmailing me with my diary entries and that she was making me cut my hair. By the time I arrived at the hairdressers, Kate was waiting outside. She told me that this wasn't right and that I should only cut my hair because I wanted to. Not because my sister was making me. She also told me that Lena would never stop. She'd just keep making me do more and more crazy things. 
I knew that Kate was right. I couldn't carry on like this. I was constantly on edge at what Lena was going to make me do next. I went home, and Lena was in my room. She was wearing my favorite sweater, and she was eating a bag of chips on my bed, and purposely getting crumbs all over it. That was my limit. I got so angry and told her that I wasn't doing it anymore, and that I would take responsibility for what I did and quit being her puppet. She now had no power over me anymore. I know that I need to confess what I did to the people I hurt before Lena gets to them first. I'm worried that they will hate me, and the thought of losing them as friends is horrible and super scary, but it's the right thing to do. Firstly, I have to go find Kate and tell her what I did. I'm so nervous. I really hope she forgives me. Hey, so I'm Layla, and my sister Laura and me are twin sisters. Some twins are identical, but we're not. We're both 15 years old, and we're born two minutes apart. I'm older. But as much as we have in common, we have one big thing that makes it easy for people to tell us apart. Laura weighs 300 pounds. It's a lot. If you were to minus my weight from hers, you'd get enough left over to make another one and a half of me. I hate math. It wasn't always this way. In fact, when we were little, it was really hard to tell who was who if you weren't staring us right in the face. We didn't have two closets. Just one big one, with duplicates of our favorite dresses and outfits. I used to think the worst thing about not being identical twins was that we couldn't pretend to be each other without someone finding out. But it turns out that wasn't the worst thing. The worst thing is when the person you shared a womb with has to go through something that genetically, you just don't have to. See, my sister has a medical condition that has caused her to gain a lot of weight. To make matters worse, the medication she has to take also causes her to gain weight. So, even though she would eat super healthy, like only vegetables, ew, and cottage cheese, double ew, she would keep getting fatter, whereas I, on the other hand, could scarf down two cheeseburgers, a soda, french fries, and a sundae for dessert and still weigh the same exact thing. So, even though I loved my sister, it was really hard to be twins with someone people make fun of. I felt anger the first time they called her names. Wide load, beached whale, cannonball, and I absolutely refused to go anywhere or do anything without her. But over time, I started to feel embarrassed by her. That's when we stopped talking. We didn't stop talking like there was only silence all of the time, but we stopped really talking to each other, like from the heart. When it came time to try out for the high school cheerleading team, something we dreamed of doing together for years. I wasn't sure what I should do. Did I give up something I wanted so that I didn't hurt Laura's feelings? When I asked her, she said of course I should try out for the team, and so I did. And I made it. I remember how sad she looked when I told her. Since it was hard for her to physically get to football games, she eventually stopped coming to see me cheer. And that made me really sad. Things were hard at home, too. Because she needed special things, my parents paid all their attention to her. It made me feel lonely, but then my dad would lecture me. Remember, your sister is going through something, and you need to be understanding. Didn't he realize I was being as understanding as I could be? I almost didn't even exist in the house. One time the phone rang, it was one of my friends, and my mom told them I wasn't home. Even though I was sitting right in front of her. That's how much they didn't notice me. But. Then, something really bad happened that changed my whole outlook. I said something really mean to my sister when she asked me to get something down from her closet for her. I was so frustrated that she had a better room, a better bed, special food, special clothes, special attention, that I screamed, Mom and Dad only love you because you're so fat! Her eyes filled with tears, but instead of crying, she ran out of the room. I kind of felt like it served her right, but then I heard a horrible sound. 
She slipped on one of my shoes I'd left lying around, screamed, and fell down the stairs. Mom and Dad weren't home, so I called 911. When they put her onto the gurney and into the ambulance, I heard one of the guys say, Well, it isn't every day you get three for the price of one. I got so mad, I ran up into his face and yelled, Do you even know what you're talking about? That's my sister, and she has a medical condition. He was like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. And he was apologizing over and over again. Laura smiled at me as they closed the ambulance door. Our twin power was back. Luckily, she wasn't hurt too bad. We spent almost every day together after that. No matter what people said or did, we were twins for life. Or as Laura liked to joke, triplets forever. Share this video with someone who's going through a rough time for something they can't do anything about. And like this video if you think family should always come first. Finally, my spectacular sweet 16th is here. I spent months deliberating over every tiny detail of this perfect butterfly themed party. Better yet, all the VIPs from the fashion industry were invited. Pretty impressive, huh? By the way, I'm Charlotte Stone, a fashion influencer with over 500,000 followers on Instagram. One day, I'm going to become an iconic designer just like Tori Burch. This party was my big chance to get noticed by all of these big shots. But wait, Ava? What on earth is she doing? Don't you realize how important it is to sort out garbage? It's not all junk. Like, this one is very valuable. Oh my gosh! Ugh! And now she was replacing the guest's napkin with some biodegradable tissue. Suddenly, she startled and rushed to an incoming guest. Your scarf! Is that real mink fur? You ruthless monster! Oh no, that was Trixie Maxflower, the famous drag queen who's now strutting off in anger thanks to my sister's outburst. Ava was ruining everything with her hippie ways, and all of my guests were leaving. No, 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 it's all ruined, and it's all her fault. Ugh. This wasn't the first time Ava had pulled things like this. She called herself an eco-activist, and constantly brought rubbish home to remake into things, argued with anyone who didn't sort their waste properly, and forced everyone she knew to join climate change protests. The worst part was, I was always dragged into those dumb campaigns. It's super embarrassing being called the trash girl's little sis. Lonnie, where are you going? Wait up! Hey trash girl, why don't you recycle this into skating shoes, huh? Next thing I knew, a gross banana peel landed smack bang in my face. Lottie, are you okay? No! My party was going perfectly until you barged in with your lunatic eco-anxiety. I wish you'd left my party, not them. Actually, I wish I didn't have a tree-hugging, trash-loving sister at all. Then I pushed Ava aside and stormed off. She'd gone too far this time. But maybe what I said was a bit much? The next morning, I woke up to see a birthday gift from Ava on my bedside table. It was this cute bracelet. Made from recycled plastic, of course. It made me smile and reminded me of all the time she'd taken care of me. I went to her room to thank her for her gift, but she wasn't there. Then I spotted a letter on her bed. Mom, Dad, Charlotte, I'm going away to live by my beliefs and values without affecting you all. Don't look for me. Oh no, don't tell me that it's all because of what I said yesterday. She knew I didn't mean it, right? I'm sure she'll calm down and come back soon. But then, one week passed, then a month, and now it's been almost two years and my sister still hasn't returned home. We've looked for her at environmental events, but still had no hint. Until, one day, I stumbled upon a YouTuber who talked about discovering an eco-friendly island run by a community of environmentalists. Hmm, that sounds like Ava's style! Wait a minute, I've seen this before. This island looked just like the one from the picture hanging in Ava's room! There it is! That must be the island's coordinates! I gotta go find my sister! Oh boy, that was a long ride. Now I just need to find a boat that will take me to the island. Let's check the map. Huh? These are my stuff? Right at that moment, a woman reached me. Hey, what are you doing with my bag? I quickly apologized and returned her bag, then rushed back to the train to find mine. 
But I was too late. No phone, no map. What to do now? I asked around, but no one had heard of this eco island. Hopeless, I slumped onto a bench. When suddenly a man tapped my shoulder and told me that his boat was heading to that island. I followed him to the harbor, but when I saw the boat, I immediately changed my mind and turned to leave, but the man wouldn't let go of my hand. I tried my best to resist as his two scary looking crewmates headed towards us. Oh no, this isn't gonna end well. Let her go. Noah, is this a kidnapping? Should I call the cops? Panicked, the man let go of me, then grumbled and left. I trembled in shock and it took ages for my heart rate to return to normal. I can't imagine what Ava had to go through out there all this time. Why are you trying so hard to get to the Eco Island? It doesn't seem like you're seen. Now that I'd calmed down and looked at this guy properly, ooh, he was cute. And he knew about the island? Turns out he's a former resident and was now taking his sister there. I asked him if he knew anyone named Ava Stone, but he shook his head, saying that most people who came to the island changed their names to start a new life. Okay, so I just have to see for myself if Ava was actually there. However, Noah said he couldn't help, because the island has strict rules concerning newcomers. So I had to lie that I was also an eco-activist to convince them to bring me along. And ha! It worked! My hunch told me that I was now one step closer to finding Ava. That evening, Noah set up a tent on the beach and we waited there for a boat that was scheduled to take us to the island in the morning. Seeing Noah take care of Ellie made me miss my sister so much. My selfish stupidity had driven her away, but now I'm going to put things right. I'll definitely find you, Ava. Next day, Noah woke me up so early that even the gulls weren't about. We got on this rickety looking sailboat without any engine. Hello? Were we going to the island or back to the primeval times? Noah helped sailing the boat while I had to take care of the ropes. This was way harder than it looked. I could barely feel my arm muscles. Best wind ever. Charlotte, you're our lucky charm. <sighs> but yeah, at least I had this beautiful view to compensate. Suddenly, the rope slipped out of my hand, causing the winch handle to spin and fling my bracelet into the sea. Oh no! Noah tried to stop me, but I was already deep in the water and immediately got swarmed by garbage. There it is. I pushed the trash aside, grabbed the bracelet, and was about to swing back when a fishnet caught my foot. Ah, I'm stuck. While struggling, I saw a dead sea turtle tangled in plastic bags drifting by. Is it foreshadowing my own fate? Then I felt a tug on my waist. And suddenly I was rising above the water through coughs and splutters for air. I saw Noah, he'd saved me again. How could you be so foolish? You're lucky I reached you in time. No, you're the lucky one who just got yourself a new girlfriend. Me? What's wrong with you? Your actions could have killed yourself and my brother and all you can think about is flirting? I'm sorry, but that bracelet is really important to me. And I'm serious, what is your type of girl, Noah? <clears throat> me? Oh, I... Maybe someone mature and brave? Got it. From now on, I'll be more mature then. By the next dawn, I could finally see our destination. But right when I stepped foot on the shore, two men who seemed to be village guards stopped me. You said you were bringing one sister, not two. Who is she? She's with me, Noah said. I tried my best to convince them, but they insisted on following the rule. No outsiders on the island. I didn't want any drama. All I wanted was to find my sister. Hey, the chief is coming! Jeez, what else is happening? I grabbed Noah's hand and hid behind his back. Please don't leave me alone. I won't. With my eyes closed, I heard someone step in and the female voice said, What's all this commotion about? Wait, that voice. I took a peek at the village chief. It's Ava. Ava, is it really you? Charlotte? I found my sister. I rushed to hug her as tight as I could. I've missed you so much. Oh, little Lottie, how did you get here? I've missed you too. I'm so sorry for what I said. I... It's okay. I've forgotten about it already. Come, let me show you around. Turns out, the day she left home, she gathered like-minded people to come to this island and save its ecosystem. They built this village, 
and a dike to protect the island from rising sea levels. When Ava asked me about my journey here, I told her all about the struggles I had to go through, and how Noah had saved me. You like Noah? I guess so, but what's wrong with that? I mean, you always hated my eco-lifestyle, but Noah and I... You do know we share the same mindset, right? That's true. They had many things in common, while I was, like, living in another world to them. It's okay. I've changed a lot since the last time you saw me, Ava. I was wondering if I could, um, stay here for a while. Ava... Agreed! Yay! Now I will have some more time to persuade my sister to go home and to win my man's heart. So as the newest member of the village, the next day I started helping everyone with their tasks, like collecting coconuts, making DIY stuff, and planting corals. I even made use of my fashion sense and came up with stylish designs that were also environmentally friendly. Although Noah was too busy to see my creations, other villagers were very excited about them and often visited my workshop to try on new clothes. Hey, sunshine. These designs are top-notch. You're like a tailor goddess. Um, that's Sam, my coworker at the workshop. He seems odd, but he's actually a genius who could create technological devices out of scrapped materials. Each day, he gave me a different kind of weird gift. This guy was definitely having a crush on me, but even his unicorn bicycle made from seashell couldn't move me, as I only had eyes for Noah. Speaking of Noah, he just walked past my workshop, right on time to show him this new material. I eagerly ran towards him, but stopped as Ava suddenly pulled him toward the hammock, leaned closer, and whispered something in his ear. What? So, when Noah said he preferred mature girls, he meant Ava? But what was my sister thinking? She knew I liked him. After that day, I couldn't concentrate on anything because of those two. Noah started to make excuses to not clean the coral reefs with me. And guess who was behind it all? Ava! Ouch. Great. I accidentally just stepped on the sea urchin. So I was rushed to the medical hut. Ava also came over to ask if I was okay, but I refused to talk to her. Or Noah. The wound swelled up, and I still couldn't walk normally a few days later. Surprisingly, Ellie started being nice and took care of me and even went spying on Noah and Ava for me. Those two are made for each other. I even saw them secretly kissing a few times. They're the perfect king and queen of this island. Now there is no doubt that they're dating behind my back. How could Ava do this to me? Feeling betrayed, I dragged myself to the workshop. Maybe work can distract me from all this mess in my head. But here I was, stuck with Sam and his cheesy pickup lines. You must be exhausted, because you've been running through my mind all day. Ugh, just leave me alone. I stormed out of there, but tripped and fell over. Right then, a hand reached out to help me. It was Ava. Jeez, she's the last person I want to see right now. You don't have to pretend you care about me. You know full well that I like Noah, but you still got with him. Charlotte, what are you talking about? I'm leaving today, and so should everyone in this village. This place is for cowards who ignore the real eco-problems that are happening in the outside world. There, I let it all off my chest. But unexpectedly, the villagers came out of the bushes, holding decorations and a birthday cake with my name on it. They were throwing a surprise party for me. Oh no, I, I didn't mean to. Disheartened by my words, they all left. I guess you saw me with the chief when we were planning your birthday surprise. There was nothing going on between us. I thought you'd grown up, Charlotte. But I was wrong then. God, the guilt I felt right now was killing me. Frustrated and ashamed, I knew I couldn't stay here any longer. I waited until everyone was asleep to sneak to the beach and set sail on a small boat into the stormy night. But I couldn't make it far before a giant wave engulfed me and the boat. This is... The end, I guess. But when I opened my eyes, Noah's face appeared in front of me. Did you just save me again? No, the chief did. But where is she? Noah didn't say anything, but just looked glumly out to sea. Wait, this is not happening. My sister can't be out there, right? No, no, no. How can I live knowing that my sister drowned because of me? Are you crying for your missing shoe? I turned around to see Ava, alive and well. Ava, thank God! I giddily jumped towards her, but 
Ouch! I forgot that my leg was still hurt. I'm so sorry for how stupid and selfish I was. Don't be foolish next time. Nothing's going on between me and Noah. He's all yours. I looked at Noah and we both turned to motto red. The next day, Ava gathered everyone around so I could publicly apologize to them. I was ready for the villagers to throw coconut shells at me, but instead they admitted that my words were partly true. This lifestyle needs to be promoted to the world, since everyone deserves to live in a clean and healthy environment that requires a joint effort. Then they all agreed that the perfect person to influence the young generation about this matter was me. Wow, I didn't expect that, but yes, I'm willing to carry out this meaningful mission. And Noah volunteered to leave the island and go inspire the outside world with me. Only then, Ellie apologized to me and confessed she'd made up the stories about Ava and Noah just to make me give up on flirting with her brother. I thought you'd only cause him trouble, but now I know he likes you a lot. So promise that you'll make life easy for him? I'll try my best, kid. Promise. It's been five years since we left the island, and I fulfilled my dream of becoming a famous fashion designer. But most importantly, I was able to make fashion eco-friendly. Pretty cool, right? When the fashion show ended, I went on stage and the crowd went wild with applause. My creative inspiration comes from my dear sister Ava, who's shown me how vital a clean environment is to each and every one of us. I also want to thank Noah, my incredible boyfriend, for his unconditional love and support. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. As I finished the speech, Noah came on stage with this huge bouquet, while Ava and the villagers showered me with hugs and praise. I guess one trip to an eco island could change your entire life, right? Here I was, confronting my greatest fear. Math! Wendy, focus. What is 9 plus 11? A, 19, or B, 21? The numbers whirled around me. Panic set in. Uh, um, 9 plus 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 19? No, 21? Great numerical gods, why is this so confusing? You're so extra. Sit up, I'll show you again. I still don't get why I have to do this, though. It's not like I'm going to school. Yeah. I quit school not long ago to help mom out making a couple of bucks. In case you haven't noticed, we're dirt poor. I'm Wendy, by the way. Fifteen and fabulous. Well, sorta. <laughs> I know I'm a big silly goofball, but the good thing is my brother, Leo, does not share the same brain cell with me. That guy ate knowledge for breakfast. He went to this elite high school, on scholarship of course, and always a top student three years in a row. That's like genius. Mom also said he's our only ticket out of poverty. That's why she held three jobs at once, while I gathered scrap metal to sell to the scrapyard to support his study. The three of us have been working hard to create a better life for our family. But then, one afternoon, I suddenly noticed posters of Leo that accused him of breaking his classmate's arm. What nonsense is this? I tore them all down and rushed home to see a bunch of gangsters breaking our things. My mom and Leo were in the corner, begging them to stop. Stop! What on earth are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, brat? I'm collecting compensation for your brother's victim. He messed with the wrong person. The son of a loaded family. Y you got the wrong guy. Leo wouldn't hurt a fly. Right, Leo? I turned to him, but he just lowered his hat in guilt and defeat. How much, then? Three thousand dollars. <laughs> Three thousand? <laughs> you kidding, right? Do I look like I'm kidding? Let her go. Just stop it. All of you. Then mom rushed to the kitchen and brought back all of our saving jars. They're about $1,000. Just take them and leave us alone. I'll pay the rest later. The thug let me go and grabbed the jars. We'll be back next month for the rest. Mom fell to her knees. She looked so hopeless amongst the mishmash. Mom, Wendy, I'm so sorry. Please let me help. The school already suspended me for a whole month. I'll, I'll get a job. I'll pay for the debt. No, my boy. Use this free time to study. Once you come back to school, I want you to be the perfect student so no one can ever look down on us again, okay? But what about the debt? Just leave it to me. I'll work some extra shifts here and there and everything will be sorted. Now go study. Th thank you. Mom, I won't let you down again. Then he left the room. That's when mom's smile wears off. I knew she only said that so Leo could have his peace of mind. The truth was, no amount of mom's extra shifts could get us 2,000 by next month. I think if the math was right, it's time for me to say the day. 
I tried to get a job, but somehow they all lasted for only one shift. Like when I was waiting for this diner, all the food and drink just fell out of my tray. Or that time when I work at construction site and I got my foot stuck on the thing I just built. <sighs> I came home feeling deflated. Just then, there was a knock at the door. It was Nathan, Leo's best friend. I could instantly feel my cheeks heating up. Hello, Erp to Wendy. Are you gonna let me in? Or are we gonna stand here, awkwardly? Uh, oh, uh, sure, come on in. <laughs> you look, uh, exhausted. You sure you're all right? It's just the whole thing with Leo. I've been trying to get a job to pay for the debt, but nothing worked. I'm sorry all that happened to your family, and I want to help you, but there's something you should know first. After the talk, Nathan got me a job as a maid for his cousin Zach's house. Other maids were showing me around when, Get out! A maid ran past us, crying her eyes out. What was that? That is the young master Zach throwing a tantrum. He's the illegitimate son of the light master and was only brought here five years ago by his grandfather. And let's just say, Madam Linda, his stepmom, is not so thrilled about it. They've been on each other's necks ever since. The girl you just saw was Madam Linda's favorite. She's been a thorn in Master Zack's side for a while now. Then I gotta find a way to get on both their good sides to prove that I'm perfect for this job. Okay, first day at work, Madam Linda was complaining about Zack's toy car collection, so I threw them all away. But Zack went bonkers on me and went rummaging through the junkyard to find every single one of them. S Sorry, Master Zack, it's just Madam Linda, oopsies. He immediately stormed off to confront Madam Linda. I felt bad, so to make amends between them, I cooked his favorite soup and told him that Madam Linda made it for him as an apology. But as he took the first bite, his face turned green and dashed to the nearest toilet. Whoops. One rainy day, I was taking the trash out and saw a strange woman peeking from the fence. She suddenly tripped, so I helped her up, asking if she was looking for someone, but she just ran away. Whoa, Jesus, how long have you been standing there? Long enough. Come inside, it's freezing out here. Uh, sure. Later that day, I was cleaning Madame Linda's room when accidentally knocked over her jewelry box. It crashed on the floor, spilling jewelry everywhere. One of the bangles snapped in half. I frantically pocketed it to fix it later. When the gruff butler swung the door open, I apologized and promised to fix the jewelry box, but he still insisted on firing me. Just then, Zack stepped in and ordered him to let it slide. Zack then stayed and watched me fix it. Where'd you learn to do that? It's nothing. I grew up in a trailer park. Everything we own came from the junkyard. They just need a little fixer-upper. I've been doing it since forever, so... You got a gift. Besides, reusing things is... cool. <laughs> Whatever you say, pretty guy. Say, you wanna hang out sometime? Like a date? Maybe. Won't your girlfriend get jealous? <laughs> what girlfriend? I'm very single and ready to mingle right now. <laughs> sure, why not? On the weekend, Zach took me to his favorite coffee shop, and I got to see a softer, more caring side of him. Turned out he never got a girlfriend, so I made him a flirting tutorial. For a price, of course. <laughs> At first, I thought he was just practicing on me by giving me flowers and fancy chocolates, but then he continued to woo me with my own list. He set up a romantic picnic under the stars in the backyard, took me to the park, and we watched the enchanting sunset together. That night, we walked back to the mansion. Before coming inside, Zack stopped me. These past weeks that I've known you have been the best moments of my life. Wendy, I think I've fallen for you. Will you be my girlfriend? <laughs> Where did you learn those cheesy words? Do you like them? <clears throat> is it hot in here? Or is it just you? Stop! <laughs> I just need you to promise to be on my side, no matter what. I promise. When Zack left, I returned to my room. I pulled out my diary and then ticked off the last box on my list. Well, it was fun, Zack, but everything must come to an end. Soon you'll pay for everything you did to my family. I knew the truth back when Nathan came to our house. There's something you should know first. Your brother was tricked. He didn't start the fight. A guy mocked your poor family, so Leo turned aggressive. After the incident, the guy was salty Leo beat him. So he faked a broken arm and had his family come for yours. They don't need your money. They just want you to suffer. And who's that guy? He's Zack, my cousin. What he did was wrong, so I'm on your side on this. And there's another thing. Nathan played a video of Linda and her thugs threatening my mom and demanding more money. My rage became scorching. That moment, I decided to get revenge. That's why I became a maid at Zack's house, sabotaged his relationship with Linda, and made him fall for me. Everything was going just as planned so far. But the next thing I knew, mom called me to tell me that Leo had been expelled from school and ran away from home. My blood was boiling. That's it. Today's the day Zack goes down. I pulled out Linda's broken bangle and placed it on my bedside table. During the daily room check, the butler spotted it right away and informed Linda. She rushed over to reprimand me for stealing her jewelry. Just then, Zack swooped in to defend me. 
Zack, you have to trust me. I didn't steal it. I just wanted to fix it before turning it to Madame Linda. Don't worry. I believe you. You heard her. I know you despise me, but don't you dare drag my loved one into this. Oh, finally put it out in the open, huh? You and your low-life girlfriend. Birds of a feather. You're right. We're alike. And that means we're nothing like you, you evil witch. Ha! Huh. Let's see how you like it. Alone on the streets? Guards, throw them out now! The next second, Zack and I were dumped on the sidewalk along with our belongings. Watching him grappling his stuff, I couldn't help but chuckle. How does it feel to be discarded like an unwanted object? Enlightening, isn't it? What are you saying? You remember Leo, the person who broke your arm? Who you used to extort money from my family? I'm his sister. I think you got it wrong. Leo didn't break my arm. He only shoved me to the ground and said something like, don't talk nonsense about his family. I didn't care, but Linda kept telling me to skip school the next day. She must have used me to make a fuss. You mocked my family for being dirt poor. That's why Leo was so mad at you. That's not true. I used to be poor too. <sighs> you remember the woman lurking around the mansion? That's my real mom. She just wanted to make sure I was okay. Turned out, Zack and his mom were abandoned by his dad because of their humble background. Then his grandpa found him. Though Zack didn't want to, his mom made him come with his grandpa so he'd have a better life. But what his mom didn't know was that heck of a mansion was the coldest, most isolated place. That is, until you came. And it hit me. Zack is telling the truth. That meant I had taken revenge on the wrong person. Shoot! I am so, so sorry. I had no idea. And now you're kicked out. Leo's gone. And there's a huge debt. I don't know what to do. Hey, hey, it's all right. One thing at a time, Kay. I'm not mad at you or anything. I just wish you'd told me. But it's fine. I don't really like that house anyway. What about your brother? He got expelled and left. I'm sure he's okay. I'll help you find him, yeah? Thank you, and I'm sorry. I don't know how to make it up to you. You don't have to. I got a feeling you didn't come up with this twisted plan. I didn't. It's actually your cousin, Nathan. I took Zack back to my place where he'd crash in the meantime. Mom was in tears. She told me that Leo was accused of plagiarizing an essay so he could no longer go to that school. But Leo's too smart to do such a thing. So Zack proposed we investigate at the school. To find whose essay Leo supposedly copied, we broke into the school's computer lab that night. We were snooping around when suddenly, Zack was grabbed from behind and dragged away. I slowly turned around and was shocked to the core. I sprinted to Nathan's house, banging on the door. Nathan! Zack! Zack was kidnapped! He's the heir to Adam's estate. They took him away for the ransom. The heir? What do you mean? Your grandfather's lawyer came to see Zack and I overheard him. Your grandfather's sick, so he authorized a lawyer to hand the will to his sole heir, Zack. The will? Do you know where it is? If we swap it for a fake one with someone else's name on it, they'll release Zack and target that person instead. Great idea. I think Zack left it in his bedroom. Maybe it's still there. Nathan and I hurried over to Zack's house. Nathan snuck into his bedroom while I was on the lookout at the door. Nathan switched the will for a fake one and took out a lighter and set it on fire. Just then, I turned on the light, scaring him to death. What on earth, Wendy? Kill the lights or we'll be caught. You mean, you'll be caught? Then I opened the door, revealing everyone in his family and my brother Leo. W what's going on? Enjoying the taste of your own medicine, cousin? Yeah, you just got busted. Remember when we were at the lab? I was shocked to the core to see my brother muffling Zack. Shh, be quiet or we'll get caught. Leo, I thought you left. Mom was worried sick. I know, I'm sorry, but I need to sort this out. Things have been sketchy ever since that incident with this guy. And now with this, I gotta prove my innocence. So I came here and found this. Look. Turns out, Leo's essay was identical to yours, Nathan. You took advantage of me to get revenge on Zack when he wasn't to blame. You told Leo Zack was badmouthing our family to stir things up between them. You made our lives miserable. I trusted you. I can't believe you'd go this far. You're always obsessed with Grandpa's inheritance. Everything's a competition for you to prove that you deserve to be a successor. All that work, but still nothing. Do you know how many sleepless nights I had to study? Or, or to hatch a plan? Worrying mom and dad would blame me for not trying? For not being better? And you just showed up and everyone sees you as this golden child. And all my efforts have gone to waste. Why, Grandpa? Why not me? You were left out of the will due to your greed and scheming behavior. Now I know it's your parents' fault, and there will be severe consequences for them. And you, Nathan, you will join the army after graduation to serve the country, get disciplined, and come back a better man. Guards, take them away! As Nathan made his exit, he paused at the sight of Leo and I. I'm truly sorry. For everything! Then he walked out the door. In the end, Grandpa chose to give Zack his share of the fortune. 
Zack, however, refused. He never wanted the money. All he wanted was to live comfortably with his mom. So that night, he packed up his things and was ready to go back home, his true home. Seeing Zack, I realized bearing hatred towards someone cannot solve your problem. It just puts you through so much pain and even hurt other innocent people along the way. It's best just to focus on yourself. You do you and things will work out on their own. Like now that all mysteries are debunked, our family is free of debt, and Leo can go back to school. Full scholarship. Also, to compensate for what we've been through, Zach's grandpa decided to start a charity fund, and my family was the first to benefit from it. They even helped my mom secure a steady job. As for me, I found a knack for making things and found my place as an apprentice at a pottery studio. My co-workers have become my extended family. They always make fun of me whenever he picks me up. Hop on. We're going to a very special place today. Where to? It's a surprise. Hold tight.